together. And then of course at the end of it, that was that was so funny when I'm laying in the bed and he's against the wall. And he's like, can I go? <laughs> if you haven't seen it, go look at my profile. I think it says something like, uh, I took a narrator. Readers take took Denver, I took a narrator. I listened to just the very beginning of the NART today. It was five o'clock here. I had to start working on dinner. There he is. So I only got to listen. Oh, I gotta turn my volume. Do the thing. <laughs> Every time, Troy. <laughs> Hey, Brittany. Hey, Alexis. There you are. Hi. It's not a mess. It looks great. Ah. Uh. Oh, so is your hair naturally curly then? Well, what happens when you grow it out long? Does it not? Because usually that's what happens. It'll start growing up like it's trying to make a curl and then. Oh. Hold on. Hey, Troy, they can't hear you. I can hear him. Maybe go out, come back in. Can you guys hear me? That's so strange. I wonder why I can hear you, but they can't. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Very top right corner. It looks like a little power button. I heard him when it first started. Okay. Hey, Seda, he's going to come back. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, I don't know what happened. That was strange that I could hear him, though, and you guys couldn't. Okay, invite sent. All right. Oh, Bye. thanks, Alexis. That's sweet. Can you hear him now? Here we go. How about now? Let's see. Yep. Sometimes Anything? there's a delay on the comments. Yeah, oh, good. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. Yeah. Cause... Stop. <laughs> hey, I can... Wait, I can get a badge. Oh, wait, that's me. Maybe I can send myself a badge. I just sent myself something. Oh. I don't know. Oh, wait, now I have to... I'm such an idiot. Okay, I'll just say not now. I'm not going to mess with my with my success your chair makes noises lauren what do you mean like have you heard that in a book or are you talking about right now lauren if you if if you're saying that my chair is making noises i actually stand up uh when i'm narrating because my chair makes so much noise oh. but i fit i fidget a lot i'm like i'm like this so i think that i make a lot of noise hmm. so and my stomach make no makes noise and my dog makes noise. Everything makes noise. My neighbors make noise. That reminds me that one time that I did some um, proofing for one of your books. Mm -hmm. You know, we were supposed to be listening for all kinds of errors. The only thing that I caught maybe twice, it almost sounded like you had a jacket or something. Because mm -hmm. I know that you stand up when you narrate or your arms oh, were like rustling. rubbing against your side and you could hear the rustle of the fabric. Oh, yeah. You know, I, yeah. So let me tell you something that turned into a thing oh. that that particular book, I, I didn't notice it. And I'm thinking maybe like I'm 57. I attended many Ted Nugent, Scorpions, uh -oh, Dawkins, <laughs> Crocus, Rat. You know, I, I attended a lot of concerts. And so maybe that was maybe that was what happened. Is, is that like, I can't hear it, but, um, uh, yeah. So the author came back and she said, this is really annoying. I hear this, I hear it here and here and here and here. And then, so I said, okay, so I, 
I went back and I listened to myself. I didn't hear it. I was like, this sounds fine. Oh. And so I sent it to my engineer, uh, Milos. And Milos is like, yes, I hear this all over the place. Yes. Oh, so I no. had to, uh, yeah. So I had to do, we had to do a lot of, a lot of cleanup on, on that stuff. Oh, so. okay. So did a lot of the other people who were listening to the different chapters proofing, did they all catch the same thing? Uh, no, not really. I don't think so. Okay. That's, a, that's one of the dangers of proofing is like, you're typically you're listening. I mean, you may be listening in earbuds, so maybe that's, that makes it easier to listen. But if you're, if you're just listening on your phone or something and you hear it out of their, out of their speaker, then they, they might not hear it. Mm. So maybe I just need to change the clothes that I, or just like do it naked. Just, I was going to say, no, just don't no, have a shirt on at all. No and then it won't make all. that noise. <laughs> yeah. That would be, that would be, uh, it would be a new thing. It'd be like a uh, nude narrating. <laughs> you can do a whole series on it. Yeah, we can do I a mean, club. Not probably yeah. not on this app because. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we'd have to, know. we'd have to open up a Patreon or, a, or an OnlyFans or something. <laughs> the the yeah. world's, the world's worst OnlyFans. Oh my God. Who is this guy? He has a good voice, but man, no, I don't need to see that. <laughs> Oh, somebody said you were the one that got uh, got them into audiobooks. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. That's so like fun. It. Can you see the comments? I can, yeah. So Ford Ford Slack Tot was like, um, I think that was like my first big runaway audiobook. And um, for whatever reason, so Ford, if you haven't, have you, have you read... Uh, any of uh, J. J. A. Huss's stuff? I've listened to Ford. Yeah. Oh, you listen to Ford. Okay. So, so you know, he's like he's on the spectrum. Um, yes. And and so he's 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 just like <laughs> idiosyncratic, and um, and uh, he is um, uh, he's just like this odd odd guy, and for whatever reason, I like I really identified with him so. Like to this day, people are like, yeah, I love Ford. And it's like, I did it so, so long ago. So it's really cool. Yeah, I wonder, because I was thinking about that listening to it, because the book is a little older and we've learned so much more about the autism spectrum mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Yeah. And so it's just interesting when you are reading a book like that and wonder what would be different if she were to write it today or how mm -hmm. might you narrate it different? Just... Knowing what that, now. Yeah, I hope nothing would be different about the way that she writes it, you know, because I think that uh, like that was that was the cool thing about Angelina. Hi, um, that was the really cool thing. There's Sarah Peterson. It's really cool. I'm, I'm seeing all sorts of friends here. But um, anyway, yeah, that was like the cool thing about that um, about that book was that, uh, you know, that he was so cool and um, you know, and he talked about the diagnosis and, you know, and all that stuff. But it's like those, uh, you know, those things that uh, that puts somebody on the spectrum usually gives them some kind of, uh, you know, there's there's like a, uh, you know, social awkwardness or, you know, difficulty catching social cues or empathy or things like that. But then there's like there's other gifts that um, that come with it which are really cool. Yeah, J.A. J. A. Huss is, uh, is amazingly talented. Though, like the way she writes is just, right. it's just so cool. But um, so anyway, uh, I, I worked for a, or I, I, yeah, so there was, there was this camp that I, uh, that I used to do some, uh, some volunteer work for uh, way back in the day. And it was like, it was a, uh, like a weekend camp for special needs people. And so uh, if you think about it, people who are caretakers for special needs, and there is a point to this, if I'll get to it, 30, 45 minutes tops. But there was, um, uh, so, the, so the camp is for, for special needs people and they, this, this organization recognized the fact that caregivers for people with special needs are, I mean, that's their job 24 seven and oftentimes, and you're like working in this camp. Like I was one of the, I don't know if you'd call me a counselor or, um, 
uh, I don't know exactly what, you know, what, what the name of my role was, but basically they would assign us to a couple, you know, a couple of people or, you know, if it, if it was somebody who needed constant supervision, then, you know, you would get one person, but we basically just like, kind of like we escorted them through activities and we took them all throughout the camp on hikes and, and, and stuff like that to give their care caregivers a break. Oh, and, you know, some, some of these, uh, some of these special needs people were like in their, in their thirties, forties, fifties, even sixties. Mm -hmm. And so you imagine if their parents are still alive, that's a load, and, you know, that's a heavy load for their, you know, for their parents. But the, so, um, you know, the point of it is that there were, there were, you know, some of the, um, uh, some of the parents would would join in and they would they would come for at least part of the camp to you know to help their kids get you know acclimated and 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 used to everything and um there were there were people from you know with with down syndrome or you know somewhere along the autism spectrum or um whatever the uh you know, whatever it is, you know, however it manifested, there was a place for them and we could do, we could customize activities, you know, just for them. That was really cool. Uh, so there was this one, one kid and, and so okay, let me tell you about two kids. One of the kids, he was, I don't know, he was, he was probably about, uh, about 10 years younger than I was. And he was, um, uh, he really, he, he, he chose me as a victim. Uh, and I don't know what it was about my face or, or my personality, but he just loved to give me shit. Like he would just harass me and, uh, he would, you know, ask me questions, but he had this incredible, so he would like repeat things over and over again. He would say something like, Troy, why, why don't they, you know, why doesn't, why isn't Dookie Hauser on the TV anymore? And, you know, he would always, and basically what he would repeat is something like that his, his mother would tell him like, well, he, he grew up. And so he would give me the answer, but he constantly would ask me that same question, but he had this, this ability to like, I, I told him like his, his, uh, somebody told me, give him a date and he'll, he'll tell you what, what day of the week that was. And I said, okay, you know, I was born on August 9th, 1965. What day was that? And he, and he said, Tuesday. So T Troy, why didn't Doogie Hauser stay on the TV? And wow. sure enough, I looked it up and I was born on a Tuesday. And wow. it was it's just like this amazing ability that he yeah. had. Well, there was another kid who had, you know, he was also on the spectrum. He wasn't he couldn't speak. Um, but he had this uh, he had his own his own gifts. And I was talking to his dad and and I asked his dad, I said, you know, so what is it about um, what is it about this, this gift? I think that his son could draw everything that he saw with detail, like shading and, mm -hmm. you know, all of the detail and just, he would look at it once and then draw it. And what he said was that, you know, your, your brain works in waves like this. So maybe if you have a, you know, if you have a deficit in social skill or um or speech patterns or or empathy or like relating to somebody you may all you know that that uh, that wave may take you to the top over here where you have uh numbers you know you have the ability right. to you know to count numbers or you have the ability to uh use your hands to to clearly define what you see with your eyes but it was it's pretty interesting it was a, it was a, uh, it was a pretty, uh, a pretty rewarding experience. So that's it. Definitely. And she said, Hey guys, people are, uh, people are talking about that book. We're talking about, oh. um, the book Ford by mm -hmm. J.A. Huss. The whole thing is narrated by Troy. So it's just in one perspective, but it's a really interesting book about a character who's on the autism spectrum. And he was really good with math, right? That was his he, he was uh, his yeah. thing was like computers you know yeah hacking and math and and uh, things like that and he was able to like you know he was able to like you know visualize everything all at once yeah hi it's evelyn a whole, it's a whole series but it's it's really interesting sarah you've listened to a lot in that series right i think she listened to maybe the first three 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was, a, there were several and she, uh, and Julie is, um, she's not afraid. She's not afraid to blow up a book and just start all over again. It's because there, there were a couple of books that I did. I originally did. And then she said, you know what? I think it would sound better with this narrator. And so she just like recast it and re and redid the book. Oh, so, I mean, nice. I still have several books like they're like meet me in the dark was dark. Uh, like really dark. It was like one of my first, one of my first like WTFs that I, <laughs> that I ever did. But, uh, I still like, there are a lot of people who are like, you know, big Merc fans there. It's like people, people are fans of like different characters. People love Ford or people love Merc, but yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. So that was back when things still shocked you. Yeah, I think that was like the, that might have been like the, the like the first one because I was like reading that and I thought I couldn't get in legal trouble for this, could I? But yeah, it was a, it was pretty interesting. So so Evelyn Evelyn Sola is here and she is an author of this whole speaking of series. She's an author of this of this uh, series of books, which are all really really cool, and. Um, it's uh this is this the guy yep this is the guy, like, is this the guy? You know which guy you need well i was talking to kira earlier today about pen pal oh yeah so she's just like step dipping her toe into some audiobooks mm. um but we were we were discussing you she hasn't listened to any of your audiobooks yet and i suggested pen pal okay. because i mean kira so what do you what uh you should tell us what kind of books you um uh, that you would enjoy, like, what do you, what do you enjoy reading? And then we can give you some recommendations. So. <laughs> spicy. She likes spicy stuff. Oh, spicy stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, pretty much, it's pretty much wide open. <laughs> there's uh, you know, it's, isn't it funny how like there's, there's a, uh, like there's a, there's a kink for everybody and you know, I think that um, uh, somebody asked me today, like on a, in a Facebook thread about um, uh, like how, you know, are you ever shocked by any of the things that you read? And, you know, especially after like, does it hurt? Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I do get shocked. I am like, whoa, what did I just read? But, um, but it's really kind of like... Uh, it's really, it's really cool to, uh, to like read. So this is like a glimpse into the psyche of women. And, uh, you know, it's cool to, to like learn what they, you know, what, what women like, cause it's like, a, it's a, it's a foreign language, you know, that the guys have to, that guys have to understand. So we kind of like through your kinks and your, you know, your different, uh, you know, your different things that kind of like, you know, that hit, uh, you know, I get to learn a little bit more. So I, I told him like, it's, I feel like I'm, I'm in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, except like, instead of Oompa Loompas, it's like, uh, it's, uh, like, uh, outlaw bikers. <laughs> and, and instead of schnozberries, it's like, uh, flavored lube or something. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> No, I haven't listened to or read a lot of dark romance, but I think what's so interesting about that for me is the psychology, mm -hmm. like what is going on in the character's mind. Um, thanks. But yeah, I just, I think that's like, and does it hurt? Mm -hmm. There was just a lot of, yeah. for both characters, like there's just a lot of psychological things going on for why they want certain things or why they need certain things. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And that's uh, that, like, that's intimate too. I think that like, we really have to kind of like tip the hat to, to authors because the things that they come up with are, you know, those are things, those are like very deeply personal things to them that they're sharing. Right. <laughs> Sorry. I'm laughing at romance and Rose's comment. The cockberries taste oh, like yeah. cockberries. You said, like you said schnozberries <laughs> from Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That's <sighs> yeah. Leave it to you to elevate the uh, elevate the discourse, but um, yeah. No, I think it, I think it's really cool. Like uh, to you know to read that um, uh, to read that kind of stuff, and it's like you you know 
the, you know, the cool thing about it is like you get to experience these things like without actually doing these things. So. Yes. Can someone tell Troy to say good girl right now? Okay. <laughs> I can't, well, I can't do it seriously because I've like I've been drinking whiskey and now I'm and now you're like now I'm now I have to to perform it but I'll say okay, good girl. Uh-huh. There, how's that? <laughs> Sheila, Sheila's over there in the corner just rolling her eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you know what, Sheila just like uh, I think that um, you know half the time when I you know when I say something she's probably uh, she's probably like, I know this probably in one of your books. <laughs> Justin says to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, did you read about that? <laughs> no. What? no? Let, me, let me tell you about a bone that I had to pick with Sheila early on in our relationship. So Ford, back to, to J.A. Huss, Ford was one of the first big books that I did. And uh, when Sheila and I first started dating, she was like, she found out that I was an audiobook narrator. And uh, she said, well, you know, what do you, you know, what do you, what did you do? And I said, well, you know, just look me up on Audible and you'll find, I think I had like 20, 20 audio books at the time. And so she downloaded Ford. You know what? I can't really say this now because then it'll, it will, uh, all right. I'm okay. I'm going to say this, but don't anybody, if, if any of you are friends with Sheila on Facebook, don't, don't tell her that I told you this. So unless she's look, I don't think she's. She's probably not watching. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so we, you know, we're texting and we get Let's to know. See if I'll be able to get in here. I don't know. We, we, hey. <laughs> did you guys hear? Anyway, so we. Can so, you guys hear me? Yeah, I yes, totally we can hear, hear you. Yes, we can hear you, but we can, can't see can you. Hear us. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't know you were going to be here. That's awesome. Oh, Surprise! man. <laughs> Oh, hello. Oh, no, I've got to, um, now I have to read, I have to, we, we have, we have a, uh, a part of a book. Okay. So JT, oh, there you go. You did it. It took you, it took you less time than it, uh, than it took for me to figure out how to turn my camera on. Well, that's because I'm smarter than you, sweetheart, but <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. You're, uh, Hi, Tiffany. You know I, I get away with, I, I just, I have a pretty voice. And so I, I try to, I try to say it with authority. <laughs> oh, he was just telling us he was going to say something about Sheila. <laughs> we're not supposed to tell Sheila. <laughs> uh -oh, so I, okay, so go I ahead. You, you know, like, I, you know, we were, we were talking and, you know, you get to know each other a little bit better as time goes by and we were just dating and then, you know, start texting and stuff like that. And I had texted her something about, I don't know, whatever. And um, so, and then one of the, one of the scenes in the book, she, uh, so she had downloaded the book so that she could hear what, you know, what I did. And Ford was the one that she did. And there was a scene in there, but she said, Hey, you stole that from, from this scene. And I was like, I did not, I did not steal it. I already oh. thought it, but I just happened <laughs> to read it. But, she, but she didn't let me, she didn't like, give me a pass she didn't she didn't give me the benefit of the doubt oh. she just assumed that i was like stealing all of my you know all of my lines from from the book and i was like no i mean that's not a bad thing no but i'm older and so <laughs> i came up with those lines we first. all need inspiration poor sheila <laughs> you know and she's like she she hears like all of this crap from me that like you know she's she's heard it all and <laughs> As much as I talk here, imagine living with that 24 seven <laughs> and she has to, she has to work from home, uh, like half time. She, she goes to like, I don't know. I, I still don't understand it. And when she tells me, oh, I have to go to work and I'm like, what? And then she's like, <laughs> I fucking explained it to you. But anyway, so she goes like on odd days, she goes into the office or even days uh, either or, or something like that. So that you know, like one week she goes to the office three times and then the next week she goes to the office two times or something like that. But so she leaves you, she leaves you alone to do your, your own thing, which is probably good. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends you, you, on your definition of good, but yes, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, you know, but, but nonetheless, I mean, that's a lot of time to be exposed to me, like 
even if she gets like two days a week break or three days a week break, that's still a lot of a lot of Troy and my ramblings and and shit. <laughs> well, so yes, she comes home from work and you're done yeah. recording for the day, and then you're like, ooh, yeah. person, hi, let's yeah. talk. I yeah, talk exactly. To you. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've been stuck like, in my little dungeon all day. <laughs> So then she, yeah. So, so are you, home. are you downstairs in the house, Troy? Or where are you in the house? I'm downstairs. Yeah. So you see like the little okay. window behind me? Yeah. That's a, that is a window, but it's like, there's like a whole bunch of stuff stuffed in there. And that's like to keep the sound from bouncing out and, um, oh, gotcha. and coming. So yeah, there's like, there, there are like sound control things stuffed in the window, but, um, okay. yeah, I'm in the basement and that's like the backyard and I'm, I'm gotcha. below the, I'm below the backyard. So, so you really are in the basement. Okay. <laughs> so what have you, I don't mean to crash your thing. But I just wanted to say hi. What have you guys gone over so far? Uh, autism. Yeah. Um, and wow. <laughs> talk, talking about some different books. Yeah. So we okay. talked about, talk about some books. We talked about dark stuff mm -hmm. and, um, the psychology behind some dark romance. Yeah. Mm. So JT, that's a, that's, let me ask you a question. Um, yes. you, so, all right. So you write, you write some pretty, some pretty spicy stuff, right? Okay. It's like do a I? <laughs> <laughs> to me, it doesn't seem that spicy, but okay, go ahead. Oh. You've been known to write some. So do you ever, do you ever, um, like as you're writing it, recognize that like millions of people are going to be reading this, this, <laughs> these like very personal sexual thoughts that came from your mind so clearly wow geez no pressure um <laughs> usually maybe, when i'm maybe writing you hadn't thought you about know, it, thought about it but maybe you'll start thinking about it now yeah thanks troy yeah <laughs> no i'm i'm in a room by myself um and i really i'm just sitting here amusing myself so i don't at the time when i'm writing i don't at least now i don't think about what it is that's coming out, I just kind of let it go out. And and that started a few years ago, because when I was first writing, I was very conscious of um, the words and the language and on all of these things. But after I got more comfortable with it, I just started uh, sort of, you know, word salad, and it all comes out. And so that's a lot more fun, I think. But um, when it hits me that people are or have read it or you know when when i get these emails from from women or readers just saying you know you have really improved my sex life thank you so much then it's like you're welcome <laughs> that's when i yeah that's when i feel like it's a good thing and i like to advocate for that because you know um well i could really go off on a tangent about women's sexuality we won't do that tonight but <laughs> but yeah it's fun to write, i would so. love to have that conversation with you would you okay because you and i are both you know older we're not in our 20s or 30s anymore so that is a whole different situation than it was when we were young but yeah it's uh it's like writing it. sex scenes is fantastic and in fact it's i i blow through that faster than anything else in the book i can write a, a whole chapter in like half an hour of a sex scene and then they'll get to the next chapter and it'll just be like okay it's pulling teeth you know trying to get those words out but so those so sex scenes aren't hard for you to write because I've heard oh, I've heard other authors saying oh my god sex scenes are so hard to write oh no oh no no I start sweating and I get all flushed and I'm just like oh this is so good and I really get into it and so I just let myself go yeah so no I love it they're great that's why the, the hard part is you don't want to um, repeat yourself you know so at the end of the book after there's like these ten gnarly sex scenes it's like okay he's chased her through the woods. They've done the toy. You know, you kind of have to tick off all the boxes. So by the end of the book, it's a little exhausting. Do you have to go back and, and figure out like, okay, so how many euphemisms do I have for vagina? Um, <laughs> there's really only like three because there's a lot of words. I have words that are gross words. Like I never want to use the word moist. That just, it, it icks me out. Like oh, oh, moist. Um, so really, yeah, I, I use, I usually only use vagina if we're kind of joking around, if like a bunch of girls are joking around about their vag or something, but you know, during the actual act, nobody is using the clinical terms because it's, you don't want to sound like you're going to the gynecologist, you know? So yeah, 
it's all the sexy words. So when I, when I meet people in real life who, it's funny you ask that, who ask me what I write and I tell them I write, you know, like erotica and romance and stuff like that. The first thing they ask is like, do you use all the words? It's, oh yeah, I use all the words. All the words. <laughs> all the words. All the words. Use. And I use them all the time. <laughs> yes. all it's the fun. Words. Yeah. And then Tiffany listens to all the words, right? Yes, no, I no. listen to all the words. In Costco sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. Tiffany. You know, in that, Costco, that reaction... Target, Carline. Yeah. While the kid, today I'm listening to something and we were getting to something good, but I had my earbuds in. I'm driving. I have six children in the back seat and I had to stop. Oh, Lord. Like, I can't. I can't, yeah. I can't do your, this. Your like, You're dripping sweat. Mom. I'm like, yeah. no, mom. I want to enjoy this and I cannot with the kids. They're, the they're tapping you on the shoulder. Mom, mom. That's mom, what happens. It's mom. mom. Mom, yeah. oh my God, oh, I everybody out. <laughs> you crash into a light pole. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Angelina has narrator friends sending her clips of all the words. All the words. Hi, oh, Angelina. Which, which scene, I love her. Which take do you like better, take one or take two? I'm like, oh, that sounds real nice. Good job. Oh, do they do they really do that? That they send they send Angelina the. The words of them, like oh, saying those words. Angelina sent me something. Oh, she did. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So, so take you're one like, or take two. You're doing consulting for narrators. You're like, yeah, I like yes. to uh, <laughs> send me your. Yes. your when she, when your she said the c word, it sounded more convincing. Like maybe I could feel some backstory in that. <laughs> when you said voice. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, tell me more about that. Yeah, actually, it's Tiffany, it would be a really good. Like this, this part's a little fast. This is a little slow. There's too much of a pause right here. I mean, that was really our conversation. <laughs> well, because it's true, right? If there's pauses in weird spaces, or if it's too slow, you're like, so. Right. Well, and that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. It was a pause, and because I'm listening, I have my eyes closed, and the pause was just long enough that you think the other character is about to say something. Mm. So it was too long of a pause. I should actually have you do some quality control for me because I don't have the time to listen to these things. It takes me forever to get through it. So I should just give it to you and then you can give me your notes. That that would be fun. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. You can be like, okay, Troy, in this chapter, Troy sounded sleepy. He's going to have to redo this. <laughs> Troy, come on. Multiple come on. times, Troy. <laughs> get it up, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take your Viagra before the scene. Let's go. <laughs> over and over and over again. Let's do a practice session. Of this sex scene, well, I'm gonna get in the bath. <laughs> yes, and you read it to me live. I mean, because we're all just close friends, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, JT, we all, so, we all know the whole thing. So today, we have one month yes. until something big. Yes, until liars like us drops. And I just heard from my PR company that they have so many requests for arcs that they had to shut it down because it's like one of the most um, requested books they've ever had. I believe so, it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about the release of this one. Um, and there's going to be all kinds of fun things happening for uh, readers who followed my other books because, you know, I usually have some characters who will pop in and out randomly. So um, that's happening. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, can you give us a teaser at all? Or does that, that needs to be a surprise, right? It is. And you know, actually, um, yeah, I, I want to say it, but I can't because it, you know, you know, a, my Maybe books a, a lot of times, yeah, I, I have like these weird twists. This one isn't like pen pal where, you know, that kind of a twist, but, uh, but there's still things that lead up to the end where you go, oh, so that's coming. Yeah, 30 days. I'm excited. Very exciting. And then the audio will come out the soon after? The audio will come out, yeah, I believe in July. The end of July. Okay. So not too long to wait. We'll and recording starts soon, Troy? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that face. I know. It's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm, I am. I am really looking forward to it. Uh, like, there's, you know, there's some, there's some that I really look forward to, and and this one, like, as I, I've been seeing your stuff coming out, like, you know, some some teasing stuff and and stuff like that. So, uh, so I, every time I, I see it, I'm like, ah, yeah. But um, I, uh, yeah. So and, and I, I, uh, I've seen like a, just a couple of lines. So, and we have a nice multicast 
uh, for that too. So that's going to be amazing. That's my new favorite thing, multicast. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Yeah, multicast is huge. It's like you know, I, I it, it seemed like like for for a long for the longest time it was like um it was like the like the uh, Jurassic uh, the Jurassic era where like it was solo narrators just doing one book all the way through. Yes. And, and he sounded like Aleister Crowley. You know, <laughs> she took she took her dress off and. It was good, right. yeah. And, uh, and and then like, and then all of a sudden there came this thing like, oh wow! So you could have like a male narrator do the male chapters, and the female narrator would do the female chapters, and then shortly after that, it's like, oh well, wait a minute. What if we had the male narrator do their own parts, and the female narr narrator do all their own parts, and you just and and it's all together. And all of a sudden, it's like, now you've got, okay, so what if we had Ozzy Osbourne play the character of this guy, and then Morgan Freeman would come in for like a three-second piece, and then oh, all of a sudden... cast, yeah, let's do that. And, and so, like, all of a sudden, like, multicast is where it's at. And I think that, I think that people are, like, clamoring for it. They're saying, yeah, that, I want more it. of that. So you're starting to see, you know, you're starting to see it happen. So. so I wonder if we're also going to start seeing things um, not just with music playing, but making audiobooks a little more cinematic where authors will go in and have uh, the narrators remove, or I guess they would remove the dialogue tags mm -hmm. or some dialogue tags. So when two characters are speaking to each other, mm -hmm. the descriptors are left out of the audiobook. Yeah, and I try and do that when I'm writing the books now because I find a lot of authors add way too many descriptors like he said, you know, glaringly or she did. The, it's like you can when you're having these long conversations, you can just have it be back and forth for quite a long time before you have to go back in and remind people who is supposed to be speaking because like you said when it's in an audiobook you don't have to have that but that's, that's a good idea do. maybe maybe we will do the, the one problem is when you make changes to a manuscript or the paperback it doesn't sync up correctly with the audiobook so it all has to be you know the, the same sync. it, it yeah. can't be oh, whisper yeah, that's right that's yeah. yeah that is a problem because mm -hmm. I, was, I was just thinking like yeah so when you're when you're painting the picture on the page for people to read mm -hmm. then you do kind of have to you know you know you have to fill in those details to help them yeah. you know help them imagine that but yeah when when you when you don't have to do that for the audiobook that's you know that's another thing but it doesn't sync up with with the book mm -hmm. and tiffany you like to you like to read along with listening right i do but i mean if that was a that's not a deal breaker for me they're are plenty of times that I have an ebook, I have the audiobook, and even though it's whisper synced, it still doesn't quite get you where you want to go. So I still have to go and find it. So it's mm -hmm. not. Yeah. I mean, anybody could figure that out I just on their have, own. I just, I just have an amazing idea. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> think about okay. Think about this. So, all right. So <laughs> Tiffany, you just said get me where I need to go, and so me being twelve, I thought of an idea. Okay. So what if there was, all right, so like, this is a very specific kind of book, you know, and, and like for like a very specific set of scenes. But what if there was like an erotic toy manufacturer that could come up with a toy oh, no. that would, that would stink up with whisper <laughs> It would be, I don't know what you would call it. Oh, I'm going to start blushing. That's up to, it's up to you guys to like come up with a, with the title. Yeah. But it's yeah. but it basically. The audio vibe. <laughs> the audio vibe. Bingo, yes. right there. The audio vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so as the chapter goes on, it's like. <laughs> and, it, yeah, and it ramps up. Like, you know, it's like. <laughs> He opened. He she she opened the door. And I like it. it. I like and, it. You know, she opened the door and crashed into his chest, and it's like you'd get like this, like this, Jolt. Ooh, like a little, <laughs> right? How does and that then, come again, Troy? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that, like a you know, just like a just like a thrum. You know, there would be like a a thrum. Yeah, well, we could call it the thrum too. Yeah, That's another or the ex the con. I don't know if you guys are reading these comments. <laughs> no, you know what we could also do? We could have Sarah like Peterson's lingerie, like, like underwear. On the table. 
Yeah, we could have underwear that also goes along this. Like you could brand the audio underwear. It has a little toy in it, so you could sell like a whole package. I like it. I think you're I a genius, it. Troy. Trademark audio vibe. You yeah, audio vibe. A... You heard it here first. On that. <laughs> you can sell some of that, though. I'm sure. Yeah. That would be so cool. Yeah, and you know what? This is where it started. This is where like That's the right. world. So you know, actually, I mean, like I'm laughing, all... but people would. People would buy this. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, thing, like all I would buy it. <laughs> all the internet is driven by porn. Like you know, all of the all of the big advances in uh, in internet has been driven by sexual websites. Like mm -hmm. you know, what is it? Um, uh, you don't have to list them. We we get it. <laughs> Pornhub, <laughs> X Hamster. Um, so he does it anyway. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, like all of those, you know, all of those, uh, those technological advances, but that would be really cool. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know how, like how you would do it, but, but that sounds like, that sounds really cool. Yeah, I think that was a good idea. Thank you. I appreciate well, that. We, so. we will have to do that. Yes. So yes. My husband, you, are, you are a very creative thinker. My husband's an electrical engineer. So when we're done with this, I'll go pitch this idea to him and say, hey, you need to like come up with some. Tiffany, I can see the video of you already testing out the prototype. Yes, <laughs> Tiffany, you've got to be our model. Yeah. I will save that for Sarah. Sarah just, will do Just that. turn the, yeah, Sarah, Sarah will do it. Is, Sarah will do it. That's not my Sarah Just, just a facial reaction shot, just like this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she would do it in a her eyes. Yes, I can see it right now. Sarah, you're on it. I'm calling oh, China after uh, after we get off of this thing. I'm calling China and getting them on, uh, getting getting them busy on the uh, prototypes. That's right. I know. Well, I'll call my just, IP attorney. We don't attorneys. have to reinvent we, yeah. the wheel. We actually just need to partner with a company that's already making high yeah. quality things. Yeah. Yes. And um, you know, get a partnership going. I love yeah. this idea. This is really genius. Okay. Yeah. yeah we'll <sighs> All right. We'll do, it, we'll do it by satellite. That'll be really cool. Uh, yeah, and we test subjects. We can send them out to readers and listeners, and mm -hmm. we can make we can have a contest, the O contest, and they can yeah. all submit their little clips. Wow, oh. that would be yes. And you send them to me. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> oh God! You uh, perv! You I'll perv. be the judge and. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Wow. This, would be, this would be like a, a home, a real homegrown family company. That'll be really yeah. cool. Yes, it will. It'll just be all Apple of Pie. business. Yeah. So uh, what are we going to call the LLC though? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Panty porn. I don't know. Oh yeah. Well, so there's Thrum and there's, there's Thrum. The, uh, I like Thrum. I like Thrum. Thrum yeah, is a good audio, one. Audio vibe is a great idea. Yeah. I like audio vibe. The, yeah, we need to search that out and see if it's a, you know what, we just said Sorry. it on TikTok. And so like, so the, uh, the, the, uh, yeah, the, the, whoever's like looking over the thing is like, they're like, oh, good idea. Uh, yeah. Just, so I'll go, I'll go look at the website after this and see if I can <laughs> go to GoDaddy and get it. Yeah. Oh, God. Snatch that up. God. So yeah, we're doing a lot of good things. We're, uh, we'll, we'll That's work on cancer later. This is a brain trust that's happening right now. This is like, I love it. <laughs> yeah, we can solve some world problems here. Mm -hmm. Audio vibe, make your book come alive. Dude, that's perfect. Sarah, yeah, you've just come up with a, we are building a company as we, as, as we speak. We're building an empire is what's happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is just the beginning from this little kernel. I love it. Okay. This is a really good idea. I, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if we could have sense somehow embedded into this experience, like at oh, some point. <laughs> very important. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's a whole other thing. It is. And, and um, warm and cool <laughs> temperatures and all kinds yeah. of stuff. Yeah. We, we need to get a movie guy in on this. I'll see if I know any movie guys, I special mean, effects guys. This, about, this is a full experience for so, talking. Yeah. Okay, oh, it's like a Disneyland ride. You have to go enter video. into it. Bush Gardens. All right. <laughs> So oh, we contact a those guys. Audio we... vibe. It's not our, It's not what we're talking about, though. Different no. kind of audio. We, we'll find. We'll find it. We'll find it. 
Yeah. And yeah, so look, you, 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 okay, just like the Jurassic Park ride you have at Universal Studios, we could have Bush Gardens and the audio vibe. Bush Gardens? Right. Yeah, Bush <laughs> like Gardens. not the old beer bush, but. No. Right. The bush bushy. Bush. <laughs> yeah, the Bushy Gardens. Wow. And yeah, you could, you could have your ride and it would, it would be like a half hour ride. <laughs> that would be nice. Oh yeah. yeah. Or you could, you could choose how long the experience you want. Like, oh. you know, if you've been married a long time, it's like you get the two minute ride because you just want to build up to it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you, you're not you used want, to quite so much, but yeah. You know, word, words of affirmation and then punchline and then, mm -hmm. yes. and then move on. Yeah. Oh, I like that. We can work the love languages into it. So like, you know, if your love, love language is like receiving gifts, somebody can shower you with rose petals while you're listening to this. Thing. I love it. Yeah. yeah. We can do I all that. It. Okay. Sold. Yeah. You yeah, guys. my husband is physical touch, but not necessarily in a sexual way. He just wants like somebody playing with his hair, scratching his head, scratching his back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, there, yeah, if like that, that was incorporated in so that I don't have to do it all the time. <laughs> There's just some random woman standing behind him. Like, <laughs> I mean, woman, man, he does not care. He loves massages. Like he just, he's very tactile. 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 Okay. I can't do, uh, Tactile. I can't do massage. I do, I do like physical touch, but um, I mean, that is kind of like my love language, but uh, but like I, getting massages is very uncomfortable for me. My husband is the same way. He's like, no, I'm going to get a Woody. Get her out of here. I can't. <laughs> like, I, I, no, the thing is I'm ticklish. Oh. Yeah, that's the problem. I don't, yeah. <laughs> So even like a deep tissue massage, like, I mean, cause they, where they get in there with their elbow. I you know? mean, they're like really, they are pushing I hard. One, I did this one thing. So when I was a kid, I was in a uh, motorcycle accident and it, I broke everything. And I, so like from to this day, you, you, I don't, I don't limp or anything. Um, but like, I, uh, I had, I've like, I've always had back problems ever since. Okay. And so my, my, parents decided to buy me this fucking gift that nobody ever wants ever um they 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 gave me like three sessions with this sadist i walk in and i swear to god i mean it really was like like you walk into like some dungeon or something like he should have been wearing leather but he wasn't he had like a he had a pommel horse dead serious a oh pommel no horse. And he had power tools oh, no. outfitted with like leather, <laughs> leather um, things on him. What's that? And like, like he used he had, to work for the SS or something. He, yeah, he had an orbital sander, but it was like covered with like a leather pad. And like, like he would like he, <laughs> this, and it wasn't it wasn't sexual. I don't think I don't I, I may have passed out at at I one time it. or another, but <laughs> but I don't think it was sexual. But. So he, you know, the pommel horses, right? That the gymnasts use. Yep. Well, he had one of those yep. goddamn yep. things in his, in this, weird. you know, this, you know, chiropractor's office. So he bends me over, and it sounds worse. Where than is this story going? <laughs> so he bent, I'm just telling you why I have kind of an aversion to, th to oh, uh, massage. Dramatic. So this guy bends me over this fucking pommel horse and he, he breaks this power tool out. And back then, this was the nineties. They didn't have like batteries. They had, it was plugged in. And he's like, Brrr. and he's like fucking just like getting, just like why just pounding into my, into my, uh, my back. And, and I'm like, oh God, this really hurts. And um, he did, he did that everywhere. He did like all sorts of really weird medieval things on my body. Okay, so you're 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 traumatized. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think that I think that was it. it. And he, I I almost slugged him. I I, yeah. I don't. It's a funny story. Yeah, at a at a certain time I, I was like ready to slug him. So he he finally let me go when I when I started looking at him like you're about to die. Oh. Because it was like really in the, he was like very very and it didn't help me. So, no, no, that's poor Troy. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. That's a so that's... terrible story. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but I'm picturing this in my mind. I'm picturing the whole scene. It was bad. Sorry. Okay. He was like, he had the, he was like this uh, Native American guy with like big blonde ponytail and He's like, he's like, don't worry. I, I was like, I'm, I'm really trying to relax. And he goes, I don't care if you relax. And he's like, just, he, he's oh, like, don't worry. I, you know, I will, I'll, I'll make these muscles relax. 
No, no. Hurt. Well, that's not that's not the normal massage experience. No. Just so you know, in case you have never gone back, it's supposed to be very tranquil and re relaxing. And yeah. I don't know, oh, Tiffany. Really? I feel like we should buy him a gift certificate for, no. for a regular no. for like a spa day. You know, I did get a I did get a nice massage from. A, believe it or not, and this, you know, I'm I'm. I'm very heterosexual, but so this, so this other massage was, um, this, uh, he was like, he's this, I met him through the radio and he, he did this weekend show on our radio station and he was a former Navy SEAL and he just like had enough of killing and, and violence and stuff and decided he wanted to be like, you know, in it, you know, go, go in the other direction. So he decided to do massage therapy. And um, so my wife at the time bought a uh, gift certificate and took me took me to him. He was a really nice guy. He was like the most friendly guy in the world. And he would tell me war stories while he was like giving me, you know, massages. But he was very he was very cool. He <clears throat> understood like what, you know, because yeah, I told him, don't don't do that thing that makes me jump off the table. <laughs> see that you see this comment? It sounds this sounds like the beginning of a love story. Yes, I should write this. Yeah. He was a Navy steel with a seal with very strong hands. Yeah, he was a Navy seal with hands, hands. And, with hands of, of uh, gold. Well, you, you, you're the wordsmith. You you come up. With I'm going to run with that for sure. <laughs> OK, like yeah. sweet Troy Duran. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and, and this guy, he turned me on to Artie Shaw like he uh, he played. Yeah, okay. uh, he had this like CD of Artie Shaw and he was like, we just talked and, and he like gave me, gave me a great massage and he cracked my neck in a really cool way. Okay. Uh, yeah. He just like, Whoosh! and like, I had no idea what he was doing, but, um, it, it that was a, that was a pretty good experience. Yeah. And then at the end of the session, he gave me the Artie Shaw CD. So, Aww. so you remember him fondly. That's so, very nice. So yeah, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. It's just like, so there's that guy. Experience and, like that. Yeah, and then there's the Marquis de Sade of the Hopi Indian Reservation. So you've had two. We need to get you on to the, the one that's more just relaxing with, you know, <laughs> they're not going to give you any music or nightmares. So, yeah, just a normal one. So, yeah. But no, you're so back to your back to your idea, JT. It's it would be a great idea to like have, you know, whatever your love language is customized yes. to you. Mm -hmm. I like it. So. Why not? Because everybody has different ones. Mine is all of them, but and and you should be doing them constantly. That's my love language. <laughs> all of them at the same time, twenty four hours oh, a day for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Maybe that's what. Yeah, maybe that's what heaven. Maybe that's why you you're good in during life, so that you could get those. You could get all of those love languages at all at the same time forever. It's like Nirvana. So, yeah. So what are the? So there's words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Physical touch. Physical touch. There's gifts. Gifts. Quality. Quality time. time. Oh, and quality time. Okay. And then I forget the other one. Oh, there's um, another one. Acts of service. Acts of service. That's my husband's acts of service. <clears throat> Mine yeah. has changed during my life. Mm. Okay. It changes depending on what stage of life I'm in. What are yours? Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because now I feel like acts of service has a much higher value for me now being a mom mm. and taking care of things around the house. Yeah. yeah. A lot more than it did like when Justin and I were first married. But now, you know, if I go downstairs tonight and he's unloaded and loaded the dishwasher, I'm like, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> like thanks for playing in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you see you see him vacuuming and you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Exactly. Oh, that's so funny. What about, what about you, JT? What are your love languages? You said they're all that, that they're all all but mine. Um, words of affirmation and physical touch are the two main ones. So if yeah, because I'm pretty independent, so I don't need anybody to be doing anything for me all the time. But um, yeah, I, you got to tell me all the sweet things. And then I'm like your husband, Tiffany. I want somebody petting my hair and you know, doing that whole thing, cuddling, all that. Yeah. What if I came over and mowed your lawn? Would that be? That would be nice, but it wouldn't like really turn me on. <laughs> oh, look, yeah, look, there's, a, there's a random guy out there mowing my lawn. Yeah, um, unless that's a euphemism for something else. I don't know, but um, no, that, that would be great. Yeah. I'll mow your lawn. So.
so many. So <laughs> we're, we're 10 years old. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys going to talk shop now? Should I just go away? Cause this conversation is no, devolving. You're, you're welcome <laughs> you to stay. stay. Okay. You're welcome to stay. You can take off. We're just going to keep talking your bush. about projects and the comments are so funny. They're so funny. Trimming your bush. Yeah. Trim the hedges. Yeah. yeah. Trim your hedges. <laughs> These are all going to be names of the experience at the um, Vibra Land that we're going <laughs> to that we're going to make. Yeah. It's like, Great. do you want the trim your hedges experience? How about the mow your lawn? <laughs> well, okay, so we're going to try to sell this to Bush Gardens and Disneyland and Disney yeah. World, but we might end up like we may have like a, like a shed at the Putt Putt Golf Course uh, <laughs> oh, no. in the beginning. You know, we, we okay, but if we do that, then there's only going to be guys there. It's like no women are going to be attracted to the shed at the, at the putt putt golf yeah, course. Right. So yeah, we, we, we need to, to we need to elevate the experience a little bit more. Maybe we'll yeah. do it like in the in the back of a nail salon. So we'll. <laughs> or so you'll have you'll have a spa, a spa, and, not a nail salon, a not spa. a nail salon. Yeah, a, a regular spa, like a day spa or something. We we could do that, but you know, I'm thinking big. I, I want like a huge building. I want something like the size of maybe Universal Studios where you have all these different rides and you know and we have all this branded merchandise and you can eat there and all the food is like aphrodisiacs and stuff like that. Well, well, hey, I don't know about Elon Musk, but Tosca Musk, she might yeah. want to invest. Tosca Musk might want to invest and we can show, you know, high end erotic films and romantic films like passion flick yeah. stuff. We can it yeah, can be the whole thing. Get passion oh, flicks right. in on this. So yeah, they we could would do, be all over we, it. Yeah, so there's like there's the Amy Dawes, you know, like there's Hallmark, Amy Dawes, JT Geisinger, right? Like the, and it gets, that's the spice. I like how your voice drops, it's you're the, like. Yeah. It's the spice level. Yeah. yeah. Spice level, yeah. Perfect. I haven't really even gone where I think I'm going to go um, oh. because I'm still sort of swimming in that pool of what's the good balance between because you have to have a great story you know yeah. you can't just jump into it that's just porn and that doesn't entice me you got to have the the really connection the emotional connection that's what i love and then the really hot sex that's to me that's what makes the good the good thing but yeah i might i really like sarah um sarah kate's uh the salacious players club where it's all so a sex club where you can really um explore all that stuff much more easily and thoroughly because it's that setting yeah. as opposed to a traditional romance where you're trying to have them fall in love while they're banging you know yeah. so oh yeah. that's a great series i love that Isn't series. It? i love it too i love it too really good it's all they're all taboo relationships but what i really loved about her is she really humanized the characters so if you just you know, read the blurb and it was something about, well, this is why this is a taboo relationship on the surface. You might go, Ooh. but then you read it and you're like, oh, okay, okay. And they all have story. great backstories and yeah. the way she wrote them. Like you said, it's very humanizing. They were all real. Um, I just tore through that whole series. I was like, this is yeah. real genius. Yeah. There, I really was a liked movie. It, so. there was a movie with, uh, that was really, it was re it, exactly what you're talking about. Like it was, it was very sexy. <laughs> And it's very taboo, and it's very. But there, but it, but there was a, there was an emotional story behind this movie. It was Maggie Gyllenhaal, and secretary, secretary. Yeah, you, of course you guys know it. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen it, but I know what you're talking about. It's a great, it's so movie. good. James yeah. Spader. James Spader, yes. that's the guy. That's yeah. So freaking good, it's... and she, and he hires her to be the secretary, and she discovers that he's got this kink and so she kind of gets into it and uh it's so good <laughs> yeah, yeah you should watch and it you, you, should you watch kind it. of like it it, it base it takes you into her story and kind of explains why why she really is so much uh why this is so magnetic for her mm -hmm. and yeah tiffany you have to see that movie it's, it's is it really based on a book or is it a, yes. an original story? yes it is based on a book Okay. Yep. It's a, it's a I haven't read book. the book, but it's really, really good. Yeah. yeah. There's another one out right now. It's called um, Obsession, and it's a remake of uh, it's it's on Netflix. It's a remake of an old series that I I want to say Jeremy Irons, but it probably wasn't called Damaged, where um, a husband and father falls in love with his son's fiance, and they start this crazy relationship and everybody's life completely falls apart it's so good 
Ah. I guess that means, God, could you imagine how how much that would just destroy everything? Whole, like, and they really go into the psychology of it, like how he's just, he can't, he's obsessed and he, he knows it's wrong, but he just can't stay away from her. I'm just like, well, I know you love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in real life, it would be horrible, but in a fictional story, it's very fun. The, the juicier, the better. I don't know. So Angie said that my, does my voice get deeper with different topics? Really? I had no idea. <laughs> oh, is he getting all throaty now that we're talking? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, the well, sexy stuff. Speaking of though, JT, before you leave, Troy, would you like to do a little reading for us from yeah, the upcoming book, Liars Like Us? I would, yeah. That would be uh, Yay. So I, Oh, Sarah, I'm glad you just came back. About to hear a clip. Oh, very cool. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay, but there are oh, words. Probably... I told you you have to like just skip over them so we don't get bananaed. Do you, do you have the words in front of you, Tiffany? I can't. I can pull them up. You know, maybe. So how about we do this? Like when I when I come up, when I come across a word that's going to be. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> get. But, no, but make it interesting. Make it do like do like. A, Guacamole. Or yeah. <laughs> OK. okay. <laughs> Shout out banana or something. Yeah, go, no. oh, 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 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That'll be that'll be cool. Okay, are you are you ready? Man, I wish I had more whiskey. Okay, maybe that's a problem. I think I think that maybe uh, Willits. It's a Willits, Willits rye whiskey. Really good. Willit is very good. No, actually, it's not Willit. It's um, this is uh, this was Sagamore. Oh, I don't um, know that one. Me neither. The Sagamore Distillery is in Baltimore, Maryland, and I discovered them when so my oh. wife. Did I say the story? Yeah, so it's, it's a long. You told me this. I remember this now. Okay, yeah, it's a long story, but anyway, so yeah, they're they're this distillery, and I ended up like taking a tour of this distillery, but it was like they were they were touring colleges. They were like at Georgetown or something, and so I I I wanted nothing to do with that, and so I went to uh, Sagamore, and I'm sitting there in the parking lot, and they open, and they're like hi you're our only customer and i and i said oh that's great well i wanted to do the tour so i had like some guy just who worked there took me on my very own personal tour and it was just him and me and so we were just like jaw jacking that's and talking cool. and stuff like that and they're t they're telling me all about this whiskey about the, about the distillery which had a really fascinating uh, uh story they they started in like 1901 and in World War, either World War One or World War Two, uh, or no, during Prohibition, that was what it was. They couldn't make. What is she laughing about? What? Is, I'm so I, sorry. Is there it's in the just, just go ahead. Go ahead. I'm okay. so sorry. Okay. She's. Are you? Are you, Did you see something funny? She, she you, saw a squirrel. <laughs> what, whatever it is, is better than it's better than the story I was telling. My my story is really not that great. I just okay. I got tickled at some internal thoughts. I'm so sorry. All right. Does it have anything to do with like our, our, it was just like this history? history discussion. And then I know you're about to start reading something else that's just oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's flip true. on and that's off. True. It was just, okay. Funny. So long story short, and then, and then we'll move on to the good stuff. Um, they, uh, this distillery, uh, uh, prohibition happened and they weren't able to make the alcohol, but they kept making alcohol anyway. Cause they're like, fuck you. Um, but, when the war happened, they um, they re they retooled their uh, their factory to create um, airplane fuel, and so they helped the war effort by creating airplane fuel. Cool. That's quite were, a big. Yeah, it was really cool, and and so they've got their own their own. Uh, uh, their own spring that feeds the water and they're, you know, they've got their, they, they grow their own rye and, and, um, so they've got this, this whiskey that's like 112 proof and it's really, well, really good. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I came back with that and, um, so, uh, my wife found some for me. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm drinking mostly, but I try to, I try to like, you know, rotate it. So we're going to have some bourbon together in Vegas. Yeah, 
That's right. Well, you're going, you're going to uh, Chicago, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, well, you and I, we can drink bourbon in Chicago. Can we drink in Chicago too? That'll be, that'll be fun. Yeah. We'll just have to like, I'll miss out. Dodge the gunfire, out. but. But we'll see you in Vegas. That's right, JT, yes. you're gonna be in Vegas. I'm gonna be in Vegas and then I'm also going to um, Denver next year. The one you guys just went to. We just picked uh, Denver. Yeah, we just yeah. Denver. I just confirmed with that. And Lisa Renee Jones asked me if I wanted to do some fun things there. So the answer is yes. That? So yeah. That was a really, that was a fun event. And I didn't even get to stay for the whole thing. Yeah. It looked fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody was sharing all kinds of uh, videos and stuff. And um, you looked like you had a big weekend that weekend. So yes. It was, it was a fun time. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. You just have to be careful how you drink. That's all. Like it doesn't take you much. Got a little, got a little tipsy one night. Oh, yeah, it was. I mean, it's like, well, you know, that you. Let me tell you something. That was the that was the tame me because I went to Denver before that, like last November, to go see uh, Blue October, and um, we uh, we got back to our hotel after the concert, and we're like, I said, I I don't, I'm not ready to call it a night. Let's go, let's go have a nightcap. So we went around the corner to uh, to this club and I just ordered a whiskey and then I ordered another whiskey and then I ordered another one. And and um, mm. Sheila's drink is like uh, she's she does uh, not Kahlua and Coke, but Amaretto and Coke. She, that's what she does. Oh, oh interesting. That's sweet. Yeah, and very. We were just hammered. So I like, and so I, I realized like the next morning I realized, you know what, if somebody wanted to come and like roll us and take all of our money, they could have totally done it because I was just worthless. We like stumbled into the hotel. We fell down in the elevator. We, we like, <laughs> nice. it, was, it was horrible. Okay. And, Tiffany. So we're going to have to remember this for Vegas. So we're going to just give him, we're going to liquor him up. <laughs> Okay. Take yeah. his wallet and then just leave him in a hallway somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye, Troy. Yeah. <laughs> leave him in I an got, elevator. I have these weird marks <laughs> yeah. on my body and I don't have any money. But, exactly. uh, but yeah, so it takes very little liquor. So anyway, yeah, I, I kind of paced myself, but still got a little bit, a little bit drunk. So it happens. It does happen. It happens. Yeah, I was fun. terrified. I stayed away from most alcohol while I was there because I was scared to death that I was going to. I'm a lightweight anyway, so you were smart. We yeah. You. yeah, we should have we should have adopted you and and uh, given you some alcohol. That would have been or, or just been had her be your <clears throat> your guide so that you and Sheila could get totally trashed, and then Tiffany could be like your babysitter yeah, exactly. <laughs> and take videos of you that she can then blackmail you with later. <laughs> Let me tell you this story. Oh about. no! <laughs> so here's the, here's the deal. Like so so we go to this thing. And there, and a girl comes to me and she says, Hey, Troy, um, will you say something in my phone so oh, that I can oh. save it? And I said, okay. And I don't know, she was probably something like, you know, good girl or something like that. So I did. And I like, I'm, you know, just kind of chatting with them and, and I realized, oh, and so she goes, she says, this is. Sasha, I remember Sasha's name. I don't remember her name, but anyway, she goes, I'm going to walk Sasha down uh, to her hotel. She's down the street. Well, this girl was, oh, she was pretty, she was pretty sauced. Sasha was obliterated. Oh, this yeah. girl was, she was pretty drunk. And I'm like, you're, where's her hotel? And she said, oh, it's only about three blocks down. I'm like, all right, it's like, it's like midnight in downtown Denver. And so I went to my wife. And I said, hey, these guys are drunk and they're going to be walking down to their hotel. Do you mind if I walk them to their hotel? And she said, sure. Uh, oh, I'll my go God. Let me just interject. If that was my husband, I would say 100 percent. Absolutely not. Get them an Uber. You are not going out with these two women. <laughs> no. Oh. So Sheila is. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> Sheila's just, a better uh, person than I am. I'd be like, absolutely not. OK, go ahead. Retros <laughs> yeah. Retrospectively, Uber would have been a good idea. But anyway, um, <laughs> So, so she goes, yeah, I'll go with you. And I said, okay, cool. So we go down and this girl is trying to help her friend get an Uber. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm, you know, we're like hanging out there. We're just waiting for her. And then like 
two other people come down and they're like, Hey, what are you doing? And everybody's drunk. And, um, and we're like, well, we're like waiting for her to get her an Uber. And then I'm going to walk her down here. And she's like, Oh, and then, and then other people are like, Oh, we'll go, we'll go with you. So the next thing we know, one of these chicks disappears. She's just like vanishes out of nowhere. So we're like, <laughs> Oh, okay. that's not good. Yeah. And like, we're like, Hey, where's Sasha. And, and she goes, she got into a car with those guys over there. And, and like, it turned out it was an Uber. So that's oh, okay. okay. It, it worked out. Okay. She, she got into the Uber, but then, but then she disappeared like this other girl who lived, who lived, who was in a hotel three blocks down. And so we're like, where the fuck did, what's her name go? And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to feel very good if they're, if like then, you know, the next morning there's like, oh, did you hear there was a dead girl found, you know, in the, the gutter. So I, I'm like, all right, where's this hotel? And the next thing I know, so there's Marcio Catalano. You, do you remember meeting him, Tiffany? Yeah. Yeah. So there's Marcio and he's like, ah, I don't, I mean, you know, Marcio's really funny. You gotta, you gotta, JT. He's you, funny. He's, he's kind of a, a he's really interesting guy. So anyway, okay. so there's Marcio. And, and then there, there's Riley Edwards and like her entourage. And then like another guy who just like this, he, he was an author, like really interesting guy. He's kind of like the world's most interesting man, kind of a guy. And so there's like 10 of us marching down the street at one o'clock in the morning to this hotel, never found the girl. And, um, and like, we make it to the hotel and we're like, well, I mean, we looked and we didn't find her. So I guess she's in God's hands now. And so we like start, we look, we walked back all the way looking for bars that we could invade and all of the bars were closing. So we didn't get to go to the bars and, you know, ended up there. And then, and that was the story. It, it was, it was like, it was a lot more, you know, goofy than, than what, but it's, you know, something that started out me trying to like, just do a, do a solid for, for some drunk girls turned into like, a pack it's of so yeah marching down the marching down the road and and so we came back and the funny thing was like we never saw the the original girl uh who i recorded the thing for but like sunday morning we're you know the next morning we're like at the at the you know everybody goodbye and you know uh breakfast thing and here comes sasha she's like fresh as a daisy i mean this yeah. girl should have been a zombie, but she, well, was, she like, was probably in her twenties or something. Yeah. You, know, you can just bounce back. Yeah. Yeah. She was yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, she was, she was like, Hey, how's it going? Oh, I remember meeting you. Yeah. I'm like, how do you remember anything? But mm -hmm. yeah, so that was, that was, uh, so here's where my mind would have gone. <clears throat> if, if you were my husband and this girl comes up and she's, she's oh, all drunk mm -hmm. and she says, Hey, I want you to say this thing into my phone and you go, sure. I'd be thinking, okay, when she's found dead in a ditch tomorrow with your my, voice in her the phone. Last thing that, the last thing on her phone was, was my voice. Good girl. You know, it's like, <laughs> no. I guess Sounds a little bit like a book plot to me. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that would be a great book plot. JT, you got to get on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you the story. So yeah, dead girl <laughs> in the curb um, the, and in on her phone the last thing on her phone is like right. the the guy who says hey good girl or whatever yeah. you know whatever the dirty thing is and then so he is like out of nowhere having to prove his his innocence yeah. this is sort of like a jillian flynn story i think some but somehow there's some connection like she actually somebody wanted to set you up somehow in the background and but you know you were just like it's not it's i'm totally innocent anyway we could talk about that <laughs> Yeah, like, cold surprise, but it, but it turns out that the guy, yeah, the guy that uh, that did me in was like a rival or something. Yeah, he was another voiceover. Act. It was Sebastian York who. who yes, that, he's had it out. For just me. kidding, Sebio. It wasn't you, but yeah, I no, know, you know, okay. I know he's got it in for me. I just know it. He's like, I don't like this kid. <laughs> so. He's the nicest guy. He really is so sweet. We're actually uh, we're in a book together. Um, First time ever. Am? Yeah. Cool. I, I don't, uh, I guess I can't really, I can't say who it is, but yeah, yeah we're, are you we're allowed to talk about it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it, so I won't, but, okay. but so here's the funny thing. I play the older guy. 
what's what's up with that ah. but yeah so he he plays the you know he plays the sexy guy and i'm like the older guy so oh. i don't are get you it. are you feeling a little icky about that yeah, <laughs> you don't I'm like feeling that. A little old. Yeah, i'm feeling a little old i'm like You're no old. he's the old guy i'm i'm the sexy guy he's the, old <laughs> I'm guy. the hot one <laughs> i'm the hot one That's he's right. the, you can, I love it. You can, all right. Okay. Oh God. Okay. You guys read this thing before we're here all, all right. night. Yeah. All right. So okay. here's uh, here. So uh, uh, what I'll do, Tiffany, is I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a, um, I'll give you just a little, a little bit of time. Okay. But if you don't, if you don't pop right in with a bleeper, I'm just going to say the word. So oh. we're going to get banana okay. it out, but that's okay. We've been on for like three, four hours now, I think. Yeah. No, right. it's only been an hour and 15 minutes, Troy. You and I have talked way longer than this before. Time, time goes by like it's, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. We, we ready? Eyes when you're having fun. Okay. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm reading. Okay. Well, so the thing is, it's like usually, and I had to, I had to stop this. I, I usually bring a bottle of whiskey with me and like, I'm, I'm just like pouring and, um, and not realizing. So this is like the first time I've been relatively sober. Uh, because I did not bring the whiskey bottle down with me. Uh, okay. We trust oh. that you're going to do an excellent job. Don't worry about yeah. it. So so let me just set this up for everybody yeah, who's watching. For this, this is a scene from Callum's point of view, a very short scene, which is actually an entire chapter, about maybe 20% into the book where you still don't know what is going on with these people. And um, it's liars like us. And as I usually do, things are, are not as they seem. So I don't even know if this chapter is going to make it into the book because it's sort of a spoiler. So. Oh, All, right. Yeah. All right. So I'm okay to read it though. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Sometimes my animal breaks from its leash. That's what I was about to say before I caught myself. I barely got it under control now as I watch Emery walk away. Full hips swaying, wavy dark hair cascading down her back. She's got a figure like a 50s movie star. The kind of womanly softness that drives a man wild. And that red lipstick she wears. I can't count how many times I've fantasized about shoving my computer half those scarlet lips and down her throat. It takes a concentrated effort to stay seated in the car and let her go. Arlo turns away from this conversation with the police officers. He catches my eye through the windshield. When I shake my head, he allows her to pass. No matter how much my lust is screaming at me to trying to force her now would ruin everything. All the years of waiting, all the time spent watching, all my careful plans. Emery doesn't glance my way as she returns to the other car. She doesn't look back as it pulls away from the curb and merges into traffic. When they turn a corner and disappear, I release the guttural groan of need I've been holding since I walked into her store and close my eyes. As desperate for her as the rest of me is, my stiff pomegranate throbs against my thigh. So close. So fucking close. God damn it. I squeeze the length of my aching water bottle through my trousers, remembering in exquisite detail the lines of her body. Of her skin. I've never seen another woman with skin so perfect. Skin that reflects light in a golden glow, making her look as if she's lit from within. I want to mark it with my teeth, fingers, and open hand. I want to mark that unblemished skin of hers on every tender hidden place on her body you have to stop there <laughs> yeah 
There's not enough bleeps I can use for the context. Yeah, there was, yeah, it's, it's funny. The, yeah, the rest, the rest of that uh, of that little blurb that you sent was like, oh, I wonder how we're gonna get through that. <laughs> and then I beeped with her beep and. Beep, beep. Yeah. Pomegranate. Pomegranate. <laughs> Computer. So many words. Yeah, that, so was, many words. That, was uh, that was lovely. Thank you, Troy. Well done. Oh, wow. Great That's job. Really great. Thank you. Those are those are good words you got there. My ears are burning. Yeah, that was that's like a very that's at the very beginning. So that's a super tame uh, scene. Yeah. So that's that was yeah. Part. Disneyland. OK, well, I'm going to go. Sweet. OK, thank you for popping by. It's thank you for you. having me. It was so fun to see you guys. Yeah, see you too. And we'll talk to you later. OK, bye. Bye, everybody in the comments. Talk to you soon. <laughs> bye. I was right. looking at my computer, so I wasn't able to look and see what people were saying. Yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't read she either. Is the, she is the best. I think she's like, she is so cool. Like, I don't know. She's, she's got, so cool. she's got it all. She's beautiful. She's got like an amazing sense of humor. She's obviously a genius. I mean, she's like really smart. And um, yeah, she's, she's pretty much it. You know who else? Okay. Um, Hedy Lamar, have you ever heard of her? No. Hedy Lamar was uh, she was like a huge silent film star, okay. and uh, and uh, she became she was she was also she made the transition from silent film star to like to the talkies, which a lot of people didn't because a lot of people didn't have the you know the voice, but she was just she was the sex symbol. She was like the Angelina Jolie of of her of her day Hedy Lamar I just look at her H E D Y so she was a sex symbol she was beautiful she was talented she was she had a great voice and uh she also was a certified genius and we uh part of our uh military might is due to Hedy Lamar who tried to give the Navy during World War II uh, the gift of the concept of radar. She invented radar. This woman, she was like this genius. She was a, she was a sex symbol. I mean, it's just, it, 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 it would be as if, you know, uh, Angelina Jolie came and said, Oh yeah, I've got this idea so that your, you know, so that the, uh, you know, we can we can make our planes undetectable to, uh, you know, to uh, surveillance. Hedy Lamar was that person. So I mean, that's kind of like what you who JT reminds me of is is like she's she's got it all. She's like super smart. She's very funny, and she could be like a movie star in her own right. Yeah, well, I imagine because she hasn't been to a book signing, I think she said in eight years, and she's been yeah. writing for 10 or 11. So when she shows up at Love in Vegas, yeah, there's going to be a line of people wrapped around the building. Yeah. I imagine she's going to be very busy. So Kristen, yeah, so Kristen's got it. She, she the radio guidance system for Allied Torpedoes that use the spread spectrum. Ah. So, so yeah, anyway, that, um, that's, that's, cool. uh, yeah. So that, that's, that's a lot of fun. That was, that was I had no idea that JT was going to be in here. That's kind of, I, know, of I wanted to surprise you when I asked her earlier about if it was okay for you to read something. Mm -hmm. Um, I told her that we were doing this. I said, you should pop in and say hi. And I won't tell Troy that you're going to do it. That was so cool. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was thinking about doing this, about reading this. Then I'm like, oh, JT's gonna be here. So <laughs> no, I really have to do a good job. Yeah. So Troy, tell me, how do you feel about signings? Because you've been to two now. You're about to do your third one. Yeah. Is it like how was Denver for you? Because I haven't, I haven't talked to you after the two days of signings. What was it like interacting with fans and? Yeah. Denver, Denver was pretty cool. I think that, uh, so it was, it's funny, like at Allure, uh, I had the opportunity to hang out with fans only during the signing. Um, but, uh, you know, outside of the signing, I found myself talking to a whole bunch of authors and, um, and like doing a lot of business, but I didn't have the opportunity to just like hang out and drink with, with fans. 
but at at Reader's Take Denver, it was it was kind of the opposite. Like they had um, they had narrators outside the in the foyer uh, around the uh, around the rooms. So you know we got we got some steady people coming in, and we're you know we were signing and stuff. But I had a ch I had a chance to like joke around with a whole bunch of people and and uh, and talk for a long time. So that was like really cool. And then outside of the signings like everybody was just hanging out in the lobby so we got a chance to you know we got a chance to just like hang out with people and and that was that was really cool i like that a lot so yeah but i i mean i i love those things yeah. so jen says you need stickers yeah there was a oh, you know it's yeah so sheila was there and she was like you need to do yeah she she kept going oh look at that you sh you should do that and you should do that so like i've, I've got like up my game. like there were people over there with with like these banners that were like had their names on them and and stuff like that and and then um maxine mitchell and jen jacob was were like right next to us at the at the table next to us and they had they were just like they had all sorts of cool stuff and they were just like giving you know giving stuff away and and doing all these cool things and uh and i was there with like i mean i i did have some t-shirts but um oh yeah. yeah did you end up giving all your t-shirts away not all of them i've got a, i've got a few i got okay. a few left are you yeah. gonna take them to chicago yeah. yeah yeah i don't know what I, you know i mean i think that um i don't know how to give them away like i you know i guess i could just like give them you know to whoever comes first but but uh yeah there doesn't seem to be an equitable way to give away those shirts oh well, that's true but you got one of those shirts i yeah i actually yeah. i think i wore it last night or two nights yeah. ago i was sleeping in your it own, your own good girl shirt yes, yes i like it um so question do you have any updates on where your faith you don't get asked that question ever um. Yeah. So it, yeah, and we've been waiting for the longest time, and we I think we will have have some news soon about Warrior Fay. Oh, and I keep saying that, but I think, but I think that uh, that uh, this time I, I think there really is there there will be uh, some closure on that. Oh. So that'll be nice. Yeah, I mean that's I yeah that's the thing. It's like happy. yeah, we did these we did all we did all these books, and then like the last one there was a hang up. And so it's been a little while. So, yes, merchandise for uh, Dark Star Romance, Alexis. There will be. Uh, we we need to come up with some some cool Dark Star romance merchandise. Because mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's going to be the cool that you know, like Dark Star is really cool because like I you know before Dark Star it was just me and you know whoever I was partnering with to do a book, but now Dark Star is like a you know. God, I've gotten to work with, with uh, Teddy Hamilton, and Joe Arden, and uh, 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 Michelle Sparks, and uh, Angelina. Yes. And I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of books that I know that have been made public that you guys are working on. Several Trelina Pucci audiobooks mm -hmm. yes. with amazing casts. Yeah, Trilina Pucci and um, yeah, we're just like, you know, and, and thank God I've got Denise because Denise is the, you know, she's the one who keeps all the, all the cats herded. So yeah, yeah Dirty Demise with Selena. She's, uh, yeah, she's a, she's a pretty good author. So, so yeah, and we've got, uh, we've got Chicago coming up. And then, uh, and then we're partying in, uh, partying in Las Vegas. Oh, I know. I'm excited about Chicago. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that should be pretty cool. I'm flying in. I think I'm flying in Friday. Uh, yeah, I think Friday. Friday. Yeah, Friday morning. I'm I'm going to be uh, going to be flying in because I will have been driving from Atlanta the day before. I know, which so. is funny because you have to drive right through Chattanooga, right? You guys drive through Chattanooga? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So I'm leaving Thursday to go to Chicago. Oh, so you will yeah, so you'll be driving through there. Chattanooga, but I will be gone. <laughs> Maybe would you leave me a, like a little sign? Sure. Yeah. Or you, you could just hey, you could stop by my house and have a drink with Justin. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, it would be kind of I mean, I'm not too far out of the way from the interstate, the direction that you guys would be going. 
Well, so here's the deal. We like on Thursday when we go. So I've got a problem. Uh, you know, those people who like love their animals like so much that it's kind of weird where you're like, OK, you you're bonding with your animals too much. We have become that person, that that couple uh, with, with our German Shepherd. Yeah. Lumen. He's like uh, so. So like any any time we go out, we're like, oh, man, we've got to we've got to board him. And um, so like on Thursday, we're just going to like leave really early so that we can get back in town in time to go pick him up from uh, from the kennel on Thursday. Okay. So we're kind of to stay the night again. Yeah, yeah we're kind of pedal to the metal on on Thursday morning. So Nikki Gray's here. Hi, Nikki. Lumen. Yeah, so Nikki, the so the name Lumen comes from um, when we got married, there's a uh, there's a venue out here called Lumen. And um, when I uh, surprised Sheila with uh, with this German Shepherd puppy, because she said she wanted one, but she said, no, we don't want to, we don't need another dog. But I, I felt like we needed another dog. <laughs> and so um, so this buddy of mine in North Carolina, uh, he had a litter of puppies. And so I arranged it so that we could pick this puppy up on the way. But anyway, I had been like pumping uh, Sheila for info on, you know, well, if you did have a dog, what kind of dog would you like? And she, you know, so she said German Shepherd. And well, what, what would you name this German, sh this, this German Shepherd of yours? And she said, Oh, I would name, I would name him Lumen. And um, so I, I bought a little like a name, a name tag and sent it uh, to my friend and he put the collar on him. Cute. Surprised her. So anyway, that's, that's how the name Lumen came along. So how old is he now? He's uh, almost two. Okay. Oh, so he's yeah. still kind of a puppy. Yeah, he's yeah, he's still a little. He's still he's an asshole. This dog, <laughs> he's just, he is he is he's like one of those. And and we know people like this, right? It's like you know people who are just like they're they're jerks, but they're like charismatic, and you and you you give them a pass because they're so charismatic and that's, and that's him. Like I was talking to my neighbor, the, like just, just day before yesterday, I'm talking to my neighbor and he's like barking at the neighbor. So I'm telling him, Lumen, stop it. He, you know, the, he's a friend. And so Lumen settles down, but then he like starts barking at me and I'm like, stop it. And he won't stop. And then, well, I, you know, he's got like these expressions on his face. I know I'm pathetic. As I hear it coming out of my mouth, I know I'm pathetic. <laughs> No, but, dogs have expression. I under, I get that. Yeah, he's got these expressions, and so I can't be mad at him. Like if I if I get if I really get mad at him, I'm like, Lumen, stop it. He he will settle down. But the problem is, like, I look at the expression because he side eyes me. He like he looks at me like this, and uh, so I can't help <laughs> but smile. And so then he's like, Oh yeah, it's on. And so like he's, and I'm not fast enough to catch him. And so he like darts out and he comes and he bites me on the ass and then he comes and then he goes running away again. And I'm like, God damn it. And the, you know, the thing is like, you know, you want your neighbors to respect you, but there's no way my neighbor is going to respect me when my own dog bites me on the ass. So right. I mean, you have to be the alpha in that situation, I Troy. <laughs> I try, but the thing is he makes me laugh. So, oh, so that's, that's the, that's the problem with Lumen. But anyway, so we, yeah, we, we don't like to leave him alone. As a matter of fact, like I, uh, I like Sheila asked if I wanted her, if I wanted her to go with me to Chicago and I'm like, well, but then Lumen will be alone for like three more days. Aww. And so, so Sheila's, yeah, Sheila's staying. So I didn't realize that's why she wasn't coming. Cause she was going to stay with the puppy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we didn't want we didn't want to leave the uh, we didn't want to leave the dog. Um, Is she sad to not come? Did she have fun in Denver with that whole did. experience? Yeah, she had a good time in Denver. Um, I think that like this is well. So first of all, we will have been traveling for like a whole week. So mm -hmm. she's gonna be she knows she's gonna be glad to be home and you know being domestic and and uh, just like chilling and not having to you know, to entertain or anything. But uh, yeah, she had a great time in Denver. So I think she's she's going to be in Vegas, too. 
Oh yes, yeah. Yeah, she's coming to Vegas. She ba she basically she said, I I had asked her. I said, you don't have to go to Vegas. I mean, you don't have to go to these things. I know that this is like my thing, and you know, I don't know how you feel about that. And she goes, she said, you're not going to Vegas without me. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, no, so, no, you need yeah. a chaperone. <laughs> I do kind of need a chaperone because I think I could I could get in trouble and and it's good to have somebody there to go to say no, that's that's enough yeah, shots. So you, you getting in trouble is more you talking with someone and then losing track of time and not being where you're supposed to be. That is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is totally. That's okay. Me. I'll uh, I'll keep you on a, on okay. a schedule in Chicago. Oh, good. Yeah, you can be my yeah, you can be my chaperone. Make sure that uh, make sure that I stay I stay on task. So what is the I don't know a lot about how Chicago is structured. I know there's the book event in the afternoon and then there's an after dark and then the narrators yeah. that are going to be there. You guys are reading something or doing something. I honestly do not know. Like I'm not I mean, I, I have to I have to like figure it out. We just got an email from somebody with uh, with uh, wild and windy or windy in the city um and they explain the after dark event so i i'm oh, okay. pretty yeah i'm pretty sure i'm in that but i don't know if i'm allowed to go in the other thing i like um the whole reason i was going in the first place was michelle hercules mm -hmm. asked me if um if i would go and i said yeah sure i mean it's only a weekend and i live in st louis so it's you know it's just like a 45 minute plane ride from you know from st louis so, uh, Sarah, I think is going to be, is going to be out there as well. Sarah Peterson. In Chicago? Mm -hmm. No, she won't be in Chicago. She not? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. She would love to be in Chicago. It's Sarah Beth. Yeah, Sarah Beth uh -huh. is going to be in Sarah Chicago. Beth. And so, so at Allure, I met Sarah Beth and, um, she was there and i was like oh yeah i want to i want to go you know let's let's have a drink and but we never we never were able to so we're gonna we're gonna be drinking in Chicago. so yeah so you don't think you're gonna be able to get into the you'll be able to go to all the things i don't yeah i don't know i mean i don't know if i can if i can be in the signings in in like that first signing because i think uh, that's why they did the after dark thing was because so you're, the narrators are only doing the signings at the after dark thing but you can still go and participate and see people and talk to people yeah maybe i could i thought you meant they're going to be blocking you at the door like you don't have a ticket you can't get in here. i'm sorry sir I'm sorry. <laughs> you're not allowed go, go over there so, <laughs> but uh, yeah i'm sure that uh, i'm sure we can we can figure out you know, we can figure out something. If they don't let me into the end of the day signing, then I'll just do something else. I'll just do day drinking. Yeah. So we'll just go so, hang out at the bar. <laughs> yeah, we'll just be hanging out at the bar, just drinking whiskey. So that'll be cool. Yeah, we'll we'll meet at the bar. That'll be fun. Yeah, you shall not pass. <laughs> Deep dish pizza. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. we're just gonna be eating at the hotel the whole time. Because you know, the hotel is had... really close to the airport, and I think there's a shuttle. I think Meredith mm -hmm. said there's a shuttle. So, ah, I just knocked my glass cup over. Uh oh. Good. We didn't spill any water. We're good. Oh, good. You you have a you have one of those uh, one of those uh, has good a, ones. Has a secure top on it, and the water was almost gone. So yeah, I kept hoping that Justin would come up here to check to go. Are you still on? So I could go. Well, you can make me a drink. Just give me just that would be so. Yeah, I wish Sheila would come down every now and then, but but she she would probably be like, it's very late, so. At eight thirty eight. I'm yeah. not sure I understand. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. Our Echo devices do that a lot too, but yeah. we we changed the name so we don't call them Alexa because my daughter's name is Alexis, and every piece of technology wakes up if you say her name. So we had to change everything to Echo. Well, you know what, when I'm driving, so I don't know if, if these things like pay attention to like what your voice sounds like, if you train them or something, but, but, um, when I'm driving, there's a, uh, like one of the, I, I listen to, uh, satellite radio mm -hmm. and some guy goes, he's like a, like the voiceover guy, but I think he sounds similar to me and he's like <laughs> serious XM radio. And every time he does that, uh, she, she's like, what can, I don't know if I can help you with that. 
Oh, so, that's funny. Yeah, well, do you, do you hear stuff like that and you think, is that me? Did I do that? Did I record I that remember. at some point? Yeah, I usually, I usually remember when I've, when I've done something, but I've had people, I've had people say, Hey, did you do that? Like, um, a buddy of mine from uh, Denver said, um, what was that? There was a, uh, there was a, uh, a concert commercial for, uh, not disturbed, but, uh, it was, a, it was like a rock band. And, um, he's like, you did that commercial, didn't you? And I'm like, no, but I did do that erectile dysfunction commercial over here. If you, so. Oh, I think, where was that posted? That was posted somewhere. The erectile dysfunction commercial? Yeah. I didn't post it, but Maybe somebody had, somebody had mentioned it. Like somebody, um, Maybe on a live or something, somebody said something like, Hey, was that you? And like there's you know, there's You're like, like different, yes, different Yes, yes, it was. Yes, I am. We need I to sell the, that too. Uh, guy. We're not ashamed. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. But um, yeah, so the yeah, these guys have like clinics all over the place. So if you're in Tampa or or St. Louis or um where else? I think there's one in Nashville too, one of those clinics. So I've heard of those. Yeah, because there was <laughs> so there was a guy years ago who was um, a contestant on The Bachelor, and I think that's what he did. He owned a company like that, and it might have been out of Nashville. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's good money. I mean, you think about it. They, God, I mean, they charge they charge a good amount of money for those for those pills, and so think about and and so here's the here's the thing with those kinds of businesses. Um, you don't think about it until you think about it. And then you're like, hmm. And then you know, all of a sudden you're a customer. Yeah. So. At Costco, Costco has good prices on that kind of medication. Do they really? Yep. If you pay cash for them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah not did... With insurance, that was the, the cheapest. Yeah. I didn't know that insurance paid for that stuff. Um, yeah, I think it does, or I think it can, but I think with ours, it ended up being cheaper to just pay cash for it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, man, what a great business that would be. If you could just figure those things out, like they don't have Viagra for women, do they? No, but they, well, I mean, it's different. It, it would have to be a, like a whole different but it's, thing. I was going to say it's different, but it's not really different because it's really, it's, it's basically a cardiovascular drug mm -hmm. yeah. because it's all about blood vessels yeah. Yeah, and for men. Yeah. For men, it's flow. blood flow. I guess for women, it's blood flow as well. For women, like so a little bit. It's kind of, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Like blood flow is important. And there, there are that, things, there are things. I think topical like, you know, and oral. Yeah. For women, it has to be more like sensitivity. I mean, men. for men too, though, right? No, I think I think men, as long as you can, as long as you can make it happen, then. <laughs> but sometimes yeah. you don't, you don't know that it's. <laughs> I love that this has turned into our conversation. Yeah, so it's very hormonal. Yeah, it's hormonal. So sometimes think, you don't yeah, realize that uh, one could benefit from such medication until a conversation happens with a doctor and then this individual starts taking this medication and then you're like oh that's different <laughs> yeah but it's it's not i think in my mind i always thought of it as a like there's no spectrum it's just like zero or a hundred and there's a huge spectrum in there and you can hormonally can fall anywhere on that yeah. I think, you know, that's, that's you probably benefit from such medications. Yeah. So, you know, so, so I think you're right. Like, so with, with men and women, there's like, so there's libido, right? Mm -hmm. There's like, there's the sex drive. And as you get older and you lose your estrogen and you lose your testosterone, then, you know, then your <laughs> desire kind of like tapers off. Sure. But the actual act you know, there's a physical, you know, there's a physical aspect where, where you're like, you want to, you know, you, you want to be able to do the physical act. And so for men, they're just like, I just want to be able to do it. But for women, you, you know, you want to, you want to be able to like, enjoy it. 
And it's from personal experience and friends. It's like these scales for men and women, they don't line up. <laughs> it's like men, it starts going down as women start going up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So women's libido really starts to really starts to increase, like starting at 40, it goes up. Mm -hmm. And then at 40 is is about when when men start really losing their testosterone. Yeah. um, Justin takes testosterone. He talked to his doctor just about how exhausted he felt all the time. Mm -hmm. Just so tired, no matter how much sleep he got. And so his doctor said, well, I mean, you're a 40 year old man. And I forget what the stats were, but like once you hit 40, testosterone just starts dropping. Yeah. Um, and he said, you're a 40 year old man and you're a type one diabetic. So let's do some wow. tests. And he wasn't even on the chart. Cause there's, yeah. I guess, two different, two different mm-hmm. um, hormones that they test for testosterone. And there's like a, a range and he was below the low end. So his doctor said, well, that's why you're so tired all the time. I think- start taking testosterone too because like when i like you, working you out tested for it you might really be surprised i uh we'll you know the, what i notice about about me is like you know working out i just i want to be able to go for it more and you know i just like you know my the muscle isn't coming back as fast as i as uh, as it used to and mm-hmm. and um yeah i mean i just i want to i want to be able to 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 be a beast again <laughs> so I mean, seriously, go have your doctor do some blood work and get it tested. So my husband doesn't take a lot. I mean, his doctor, it's its a controlled substance, so you have to be careful in how you prescribe it. He said, you know, we're not trying to I want all make of it. you want, into like a testosterone beast or anything. Wanna, but so he's, yeah. but it's strange because it, you do a shot every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's some kind of half-life. So usually around day 11, is when Justin can feel it wearing off. Wow, you can, and you can tell that when it's, he when it's first wearing off. He can wow. tell because all of a sudden he's like really tired in the afternoon again. And I mean, it'll be before dinner and I'll look in there and he's laying on the couch. I'm like, hey, what what day are you on? He's like, oh, it's day 13. I'm like, mm, I can tell. <laughs> you know, what's really funny. I used to like, I, like uh, I never used to like to take naps but sometimes like in the middle of the day, I'll be like, I need to go lay down. And I lay down and like, I take a 30 minute cat nap and I feel great. But, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm testosterone checked. And then because of that, he, he switched his prescription because he would rather just do one shot a week. So it, it doesn't taper as long and he doesn't have that gap at the end of the two weeks and shots don't really bother him because like I said, he's a diabetic. So he's been, taking shots for over 20 years. Um, I mean, the needle is big though. It's different on testosterone than diabetic, than um, you know insulin. What? But he does it himself now. He does it in his leg. Oh, he does his own, his own testosterone shots? He does. Oh, well, that's cool. He does I because have... he's used to it. And so, I mean, we have a couple of guy friends in the neighborhood and they're all on t- testosterone now, but they, yeah, once cool. you get used to it, you just do it yourself. That way you don't have to make a trip to the doctor's office. Yeah, exactly. I got a shot a while back. Well, the last time I got sick, I was like, I got bronchitis. And so it finally, I just like, was like, finally, I had to, I had to go to the, to the doctor. And I got an argument with, with the, uh, the nurse who came in because like when, when they, like I had to have my mask on and when she left, um, I would take my mask off and you know, do my thing. And then when somebody would come back in, I would like put my mask back on. Well, this woman came in and she said, you need to wear your mask all the time. And I said, I'm not wearing my mask all the time. And she goes, you need to wear your mask. And I'm like, when you're not in here, I'm not wearing my mask. And she's like, that's for, for the protection of us. And I'm like, if you knew anything about, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, so I got an argument with her and she, she's oh, like, fine. Yeah. And so she walked out. And then, so the nurse practitioner came in and she was like really aggressive with me. And, um, like, I didn't, I didn't really know why, but she was pissed. I knew she was. And she said, okay, well, we're going to give you a shot. And so she, so like she leaves and this like really pretty, uh, nurse's assistant comes in and she had to be like, like 20. So like younger than my, when they my kids. And, and so she's, and so she gave me a shot, but I think, I think they gave it to me just because they, they wanted to shut me up. They're like, 
old man, here you go. And so they give me a, <laughs> they give me a shot. They wanted to make but, you pay. Yeah, I, I didn't mind. I should have, <laughs> yeah, I should have been like, I like this. And, and that way. <laughs> it's like when one of my kids is in trouble, they're like, I didn't care. I didn't want that ice cream anyway. I didn't even mind. I like, like spankings. No dessert for you. I didn't want it anyway. Liar. So yeah, that would be a good idea. I'll, I'll let you know how it goes out. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe, maybe my beard will like turn less gray if I started taking testosterone you know, again. That is what somebody needs to develop. Some something that stops the grayness, because yeah, like let I me tell you, like it I, is. I just had my roots touched up today, but it oh, is. Did you really? Yeah. It's an ordeal. It. Sheila, I have so, so much gray. So let me tell you something. Sheila was. Uh, she used to get to dye her hair all the time, and. Um, <laughs> what is finally, you know, I said, I said, um, oh, so I guess, I guess, no, I guess that's no to the, to the gray hair. Anyway, so she used to, she used to dye her, her hair all the time. And, uh, you know, she started thinking maybe, maybe she wouldn't. And, you know, I said, I, I, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't bother me. And um, like, she stopped, uh, she stopped dyeing her hair when it, when it grew out. It like, it looks really cool. Oh, yeah, so, she has beautiful hair. Yeah, it's it's like um, I don't know. She's like Josie and the Pussycats. You know, it's got that oh, streak. So pretty. Yeah, she has so. pretty hair. Okay, so a comment made me think there was something I wanted to ask you. Okay. So, knowing that you have a voice that can communicate things, mm -hmm. have you ever in real life found yourself in a situation where you? maybe try to manipulate a situation a little bit just to try to get your way or uh so one time i <laughs> i actually well i didn't realize that i was doing this but like i was trying to talk my boss into something and like i'm i'm telling him like you know really tom what you need to do is you need to you know i don't know what whatever, whatever it was that i was doing and he goes, stop using that Jedi voice trick on me. And he like, <laughs> he like walked out of the office and I was like, I didn't know that I was doing it, That's but, funny. but yeah, I think like, I think maybe like, like, um, when, uh, when Jessica <laughs> came in and she said, Hey, Troy's Troy's, did you notice that Troy's voice gets deeper when he talks about certain, certain things? Maybe I do that. Like maybe when I'm talking yeah, about, I wonder, I you know, cause I made a video about it a long time ago and I thought, you know, if you're in line at the DMV and maybe mm. something with your paperwork is not going well. Like, do you ever like, yeah. you know, Sarah behind the counter, like, yeah. Hey, Sarah, look, Sarah maybe you can just help this, you know, maybe you can just overlook this situation. <laughs> you did. You that would make you, you'd be a really good girl if you did that. Right. Yeah. That would be so funny. Yeah, that would be, that would be pretty cool. But, but yeah. I feel like it would only really work on people who, um, That's, it's got to be their king. Enjoy certain context. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Other well, people so, would just, I don't know, might slap you. You know, there was a, there was somebody on a, uh, on, uh, on a Facebook thread who said something like, I'm going to post an unpopular, uh, opinion here, but good girl does not work on me. And like everybody started you know, started jumping in on it. And some people, it, well, like everybody was really cool about it. They were like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna, or, you know, like uh, she said something like, I'm not gonna yum your yuck or, or, or I'm not yeah. gonna yuck your yum. Yuck your yum. But uh, yeah, and so all of these other people started coming out with all these things. They're like, yeah, you know, good girl is not mine, but I've, I do have a praise kink. And um, uh, like uh, when, when Joe Arden said like, whatever the whatever the word was that you know that was it for me so everybody's everybody got their they've got their their own thing but i think it, yeah it has to be your you know you have to be into that oh into eyes that. on me was her phrase mm. eyes on me that's right yeah <laughs> apparently mine is the word wife didn't know that was a thing, really? but I heard it, just oh. that one little sound clip from um, uh, King of Wrath, because our yeah. audio book club's doing that book. It's Jacob Morgan. And I mean, it was like a two minute clip, but it was something like, you are my wife. And I was like, ah! 
lost my mind. Yeah, that's lost like a, that's one of my favorite. Well, you know, even yes. even when like the you know Arranged even when the guy marriage. says um, when the guy says wife, come here. You know, I think those are you know I I like it. really cool. Yeah, it's like I mean that's a very uh, I don't know. It's like it's like possessive, and it's a it's a title, and yeah. you know What's it's this like, thing? call me wife. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I think like, that's okay. it. He's like, well, I mean, you are my wife. I'm like, mm, it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Morgan. Mm. Hi, Morgan. There's oh, Morgan yeah. Jones. There's Tanya. Mine. Oh, yeah, that's a big one, too. Everybody like, likes that one. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. I guess, yeah, you're, Jessica's right. It, it does have to be the right connotation. Like, if you, you know, you have to... Uh, you have to say it in the right, in the right context. This is true. So, and growling and whatnot. Well, Tiffany, I think I have to go. I need to, um, I need to eat something. And I'm, and thank you for, uh, I'm glad that we, I would have waited until, until um, uh, nine o'clock your time. I'm <laughs> like we were, we were texting back and forth. Yeah, I just said. reminded you, I'm sorry. Yeah, I said something like, uh, no, no, you were good. I mean, you, you we had talked about it. And uh, I said, okay, so 8 o'clock, I said, um, uh, yeah, I said, I said something nine. like 9 Eastern, right? And, and you said, no, it's it's 8 Central, or 7 Central, 8 Eastern. So I'm glad you reminded me, and I didn't just assume, because I would have, I would have come over here, and you would have been. It's okay. I've yeah. never paid as much attention to time zones as I do now being uh, online all the time. And yeah. every time I have to think about Pacific, I'm like counting on my fingers every time. But that happened when I was just doing a test with Teddy Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Like he did the math wrong on the time zones. And so we were going to do a test because he had never done a live before. And I'm there and I'm waiting I'm like, oh, maybe he forgot or maybe he got busy and yeah. So I sent him a message and 45 minutes later, he, he's like, Hey, are you ready? I'm like, Oh, well, that was going to be no, 45 I'm, minutes ago. And he felt too. really bad. And I said, it's okay. It's time zones are confusing. That's cool. Well, you got, to, did you, you're the one who got Teddy's uh, numbers up to, to be able to do a live, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. And, and you did Joe too, didn't you? And, no, not Joe, Zach. Not, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're met, like a... you, you've never met Zach before, right? Mm -mm. I well, asked I've... him. I asked him about popping on here tonight so that I could. I wanted oh, you guys to cool. meet each other because I didn't think you had met each other before. But oh. um, he had a like a fundraising engagement to go to, so he wasn't available. I mean, I've I've, I've talked to like I've talked to uh, Teddy uh, through email and Joe through email, but never like. Well, actually, we talked to Joe that one time. Mm -hmm. He popped in, and we were and we chatted with him a little bit. And but, he'll be in Chicago, so you'll actually get to talk to him face to face. Yeah, that'll be cool. That'll be really cool. But um, yeah, so I mean, like most, and, and especially when it comes to uh, to like guy narrators, I never get a chance to work with them. So so I, I don't I don't meet I don't meet with guy narrators. I do meet uh, you know I, I I meet a good number of you know women narrators, but. So face that's mask, cool. not face to face. Yes. Yes, he will be in a mask. I'm Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sure. I wonder if he'll let me if he'll let me see him. <laughs> you have to sign an NDA first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll we'll... sign an NDA. That has to be really tough. That's a that's kind of a tough gig. I wonder like now that now that he's like, oh man, now I, I can never I can never be myself out in public. No, well, we I are. think it's, I think it's context wise. Like if it's, um, well, I mean, if he's himself, a, if he's, finding, he's himself yeah. when it's not a book mm -hmm. or reader or listener event. Yeah. But like, if he goes to Chicago, he's going to have to be in a mask all the time. Right. right Cause it's a, it's a book event. So, yeah. and he does it for the listener. That's part of why he does it so that, you know, he's faceless. So no matter what book you listen to him on, he can really be the character, whatever mm -hmm. character he's portraying. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting um, 
I mean, I like it. I like that that's how he views his yeah, craft. Yes. And I mean, and there's a lot of narrators who have been anonymous for a long time that are starting to, mm -hmm. you know, drop the mask. Like Connor Crace, he's going to be at the book signing yeah. in um, in Chicago, but I don't think he's planning on wearing a mask. Yeah. The only two people I knew about were, well, so I know that there are a couple of, a couple of people who do that now, like Maven Celeste does not mm -hmm. uh, show her face. Maybe. And and Nikki, yeah, Nikki has got her her uh, yeah, her mask thing. Now Nikki, she carries it off. For, she's very stylish with that mask. She's got this whole thing that makes her look like a superhero. So that's that's yeah. pretty cool. Her little uh, Nikki cape that she wears. She's awesome. I got to spend a lot of time with her in New York. Did you really? And she's oh. wonderful. Yeah. She seems very cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and. and um, I, you know, so I, I, I thought it was kind of like a Sebastian York thing um, in the beginning, but maybe, maybe that's, I mean, it, it makes sense that, you know, you, you don't want people to, you know, associate your face with what you're, what parts you're trying to play. Cause I mean, I play all sorts of different parts. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think, I think Shane East and Jason Clark at one point also hid their identities. Oh, really? Yeah. I think it may not be, that might not be true. I mean, it's kind of like taking a pseudonym and then going a step further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I figured I, uh, I, um, I mean, I never really like made it a point to like show my face, but I didn't want to like go through the effort to, to like figure Well, because it's kind of, it's a little recent, right? I mean, it's just been probably in the last two years that I think narrators have really started taking advantage of book signing events and social media. Yeah. Social media that's more engaging like this and not just Twitter, you know, because right. I know the industry has used Twitter for a long time to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like no, it's just it, really. Yeah, it was very much an honor. I think there are like, there are, there are, three different generations of narrator and like you know the first generation was just like people but they weren't really you know they they were just like really good readers and then you had like the sebastian york i think kind of like ushered in the era of the non um the non-celebrity famous narrator and um and then there's like you know, and then I, I followed with just like some guy, you know, doing his thing and, and, uh, you know, people like to, you know, people like to hang out. So do you, do you think of the, like the new guard of narration being within the last 10 years or do you feel like it's even more recent than that? There's a, yeah, there's a, there's a new, new guard too. Like, so, I mean, you know, right, Nikki, since, COVID, since COVID, there's a huge wave. Yeah, so there's, there's Nikki and Angelina and Corvin and uh, Maven. I mean, we have these people and, I'm and those, it. those people are really, so like, I, I knew that it was important for me to, to engage with, uh, with fans. I mean, I enjoyed, I enjoyed doing that. And I thought, yeah, so I want to make myself more valuable to authors by establishing relationships with fans so that, you know, when, you know, when I come out with something, I can say, Hey, I've got this new book, you guys, you know, you know, I'd like to present it to you. And so that way I could help the authors, you know, get the word out about, about those things. That's about as far as I took it. I was like, okay, I, I would do a Facebook live or I would like to a post or something like that. And though, you know, and those were fun, but then, you know, you know, I think that you, you know, you are in that brand new, uh, era of, of narrators, people who really understand, you know, like, in constant engagement with fans like you know TikTok is like you understand hashtags and you understand uh you know you're you have this whole community of people that you've established you know this relationship with and i think that there's some narr you know some of the narrators are out there that are just like that um like angelina and nikki and maven and and uh people like that in corvin you know who understand like just like being in front of, uh, in front of people and like doing their craft in front of, you know, in front of the audience. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that's like a, that's a, that's a different thing. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of weird for me. Like when I'm doing my narrating, I typically just like focus on my narrating. And so it's difficult for me to like do both at the same time, but you know, watching Angelina do that, she's just like, she's good at it. She can bounce back and forth really easily. She's such a pro. But I've, I've watched uh, Stella Hunter. She does a lot of live narration too. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't bounce back and forth as much. Okay. She's just at work and you're just watching her at work. I mean, she'll engage with people in comments occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's Gary the thing Furlong like, does that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. So I like the way that Angelina does it because she's like very, she, she, she like reads her thing and she does, she does her stuff. And then when she stumbles, she'll stop and she'll like find her way back and then she'll look at the comments and she'll and she's like so personable with people she'll say oh yeah hey tiffany how's it going how's you know how's your daughter doing and you know like she'll yeah. she'll like chat with you and then she'll go okay so let's get back to the you know get back to the thing and you know that to me is very entertaining but um you know but i'm not th i'm not a good judge of it because i'm like i'm a narrator and so all of the things to me that that seem like just weird or just like you know to me this is just ordinary everyday stuff and i can't imagine why it would be interesting for people to sit here and watch me read oh it's very interesting you should do it more you should live narrate more often unless you feel like it's too distracting if you feel like you're going to end up not doing the work that you need to do and you're just going to be engaging with people but yeah, i mean well, it's something that listeners love it helps them feel closer to the project, closer to the author, closer to the characters, and it does nothing but boost your brand. Watching us, uh, watching us do this thing, it's like I didn't know I was like, uh, like talking behind her back, but she's like here, here watching us. I know. I didn't know she was still in here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe I will. I mean, I you know maybe it's something that I need to get I need to get better at, so that I can. Um, uh, you know, do that because I do, you know, I do like have a certain amount of, of hours that I have to get done every day, but, um, but it would be, it would be nice to get a little bit better at that and be able to like talk to people. You like, wouldn't have to do it long. Done. I mean, you could just, you know, once or twice a week, maybe set aside a 30 minute window and you have permission from the author or the yeah, that's um, another thing publisher to, to yeah. that says, Hey, it's okay if you do this and yeah. I need to get better about uh, about like doing that in advance saying, OK, hey, in two weeks, I'm going to be doing this book. Is it OK if I, you know, if I read some of it live, you know, on TikTok? So. Yeah. yeah. So we 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 should ask JT. You could ask JT or I could ask JT for you and see when you start recording that. If uh, yeah, that would be cool. I mean, some of it you won't be able to record, but yeah, it would have to be like a different uh, it would have to be a different a uh, different place to be able to do like some of the stuff that she, you know. So a lot of narrators go through Discord. There's all kinds or Clubhouse. I need to learn Discord. I oh, can't God, it, thing out to save my life. I can't either. I've tried at uh, Discord. Really it's good at it. Yeah. Like that. Angelina could teach me. Yeah. I mean, she does it a lot. She will, she'll say something about like, she's going to go narrate a spicy scene in this particular room on discord and you can just go and pop in and listen. So you don't see, well, maybe you can turn a camera on. Usually you just hear what's going on. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. That's Stella does it too. There's a lot of narrators yeah. that will do that. That's usually better for me because I don't usually take a shower before like uh, two <laughs> in the afternoon. So so that that worked out better for me because I mean, like my my head, my hair will be all all messed up, like it is right now. Nobody cares about your hair. Yeah, I know. I probably. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably. Yeah. Could. Oh, you can turn the camera on if you choose, but you don't have to. Okay. We're just there to listen, so. Yeah, sometimes it's better just to do that, you know, just to listen because that way you can kind of like imagine your own, you know, your own characters and. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, people love bloopers too. I mean, and I love that. I love watching just the whole process, especially if it's a duet style narration, like with the clicker and just how that process comes together. And when you make a mistake, do you, do you punch and roll? Okay. So you just keep going. I've got you a just big start over and keep going. 
<laughs> there is and that's that's another thing like narrators like i had the biggest arguments with narrators like you know you on these facebook uh, these facebook groups i ended up just having to leave these damn groups or 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 invited to leave by these groups as well but i used to argue with people like people would be like oh yeah punch and roll is what is what the real professionals do and i'm like i'm a kind of professional and i don't do punch and roll but yeah so it's like um so punch and roll takes me out of my game and those clickers drive me nuts um, oh, so you don't use a clicker. No, I don't use a clicker because like they, uh, you know, when I'm doing my thing and you, and it's like, click, click, it just like, it's, it's jarring to me. So get you out of the story. Well, you have I'm to a, do what works for you. So I'm how a, does that work when you're doing do it style narration? Then do you just pause longer than usual? Yeah. I, I give it a three second pause. Yeah. Okay. As a matter of fact, like, uh, like I just did a multicast and, um, I have my uh, my audio program set up so that when it hears my voice, it starts recording, and then it will it won't stop recording for three seconds after I'm done talking, and oh, so that okay. gives me like a three second pause between my things. So, okay. so yeah. So you doing that way, you have a lot of trust in your engineer mm -hmm. to go in, and I guess you guys have worked together a long time, right? Yeah. Thank so God he knows me. you really well, and that helps too. So he can go in and. That guy knows me so well. I feel and, and I feel badly for him because, yeah. <laughs> well, so I try to like I'll I'll record and then but then I go back and I try to like clean out like I I clear my throat really loud and I don't want to subject people to that, and um, like if I if I go off on a rant like when I get pissed off because I do I will I I have uh, I have like this dialogue that I have with myself. Where it's like, uh, uh, like I, I have, a, I have kind of a love hate relationship with myself. And so I'll like, you know, if I screw up and if I, if I screw up enough, I'll just like go, Jesus fucking Christ, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then I'll move on and I'll, and I'll do my thing. But if I forget to take that out, then my poor engineer is stuck having to, having to, uh, like edit out all my, my cursing and expletives and, oh. and stuff like that when you get really mad at yourself but that probably doesn't happen very much right no no not at all i mean because that <laughs> those those well those two chapters that i well maybe you had already done that the two chapters that i listened to that i was proofing mm. there were no like verbal i think there might have been one like mm. maybe you missed a word or i don't know why i looked yeah. over here as if my computer's open to that like maybe, yeah, Jessica did it too. I think maybe you missed one word and then it was the rustling of the clothing, but that was it. There were no other errors. Well, yeah, that's that's after that's after our guy does his magic. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he it, it had already gone through round one. Yeah, so you, yeah, you, you okay, got me. I think I just me, forgot. Yeah, with my, with my makeup on. Yeah. Mm, okay. So. I was, well, uh, I mean, I was really impressed. <laughs> I, I should have said, oh, yeah, no, that's no my first two. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, so I make, I will typically make like on a, on a good day, I'll make um, about 75 or 80 mistakes in an hour's worth of audio. Uh, on a bad day, I can make 120 mistakes in an hour's worth of audio. Finished audio? Um. Or just an yeah. hour. The, yeah, just an hour's worth of, you know, worth of stuff. And usually, so that'll come out like if I do, if if I have with all my mistakes about an hour and 15 minutes, that will condense down to about an hour's worth of finished audio okay. after after they edit out all my mistakes. So, yeah, Troy Duran unplugged. But I uh, like it though. I I feel like it's helpful for people to hear stuff like that because even though you have been doing this for a very long time, you've mm. narrated over 450 books at this yeah. point, right? We're like, we're already, so we're getting ready. To, so it's Are you guys at, at 500. Yeah. So I'm at, I'm at, it's about 480 now. Wow. And uh, yeah, so there's like, there's about nine books that are on pre order. And so, when those you know when those hit it'll be about 480 489 so yeah i mean I'm, i think i'm gonna be about 500 by i don't know um july 
Yeah, July or so. And so we're going to have to figure out, we're going to have to figure out what to do for the month contest. of 500. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. I have one idea for, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you about my idea for, okay, for uh, one of the prizes. So, you know, we do, we do like week one, week two, week three, week four, and then the grand prize, right? So here's what I'm thinking about with uh, a prize for, um, for one of the weeks. What about, um, you know, those little builder bears? Yeah. And you can... <laughs> do a voice box. Yeah. So you could do like a little voice box and then like and, it. And it would say something. So if I could figure out how to do that, wouldn't that be kind of cool? <laughs> like, be... um, and I don't know, like, you know, like maybe I could just like have it say, and maybe you could like do several phrases. So I could, you know, one of them could be good girl. And then another one could be, you know, who's my greedy girl or something yes. like that. I don't know, but uh, a Troy build a bear. I love bear. it. That's a great yeah. prize. So anyway, that's, that's one of my ideas, but yeah, so we're going to have to figure out what to do. Um, for <laughs> this <project. Teddy> Ruxpin. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember Teddy oh, Ruxpin? Ruxpin? Yeah, I do. I do. Oh. So, you know, the funny thing is, uh, um, build a bear workshop is headquartered right here in St. Louis. So oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. I don't think they would do. Yeah. They, they probably wouldn't go for like the, you know, the spicier things that I would put inside their bears, but, um, you but know. when you just go into a store to do it yourself, I if think I you can just myself, say whatever that would be the best. Yeah. Cause then I can say whatever I want, mm -hmm. man, wouldn't it be cool if I could do like a, like a custom one, you know, like if you won week number one, I, I, I could have it say, you know, Tiffany, you're a good girl or whatever. Yes. yes. Okay. So it has to be customizable and maybe you have several different phrases and let the winner choose the phrase that they want. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. I think that'd be a, that'd be a fun prize. Okay. Yeah. So that that's, uh, that's the only thing that I've thought about. So we need to figure out like, and that's another thing. It's like the, the, you know, the, the stakes are higher now because like it has to like, Year number one, we gave away a trip to Allure in Chicago. Uh, that was the month of 300. And then the month of 400, of course, we're, yeah, we're going to Vegas. And so now we need to figure out, all right, what's, you know, what's, what's going to be that for the month of 500? So well, I guess you have to think about what, if you're wanting to stick to trips, like what's a, what's an event that you really want to go to next year? I don't know. I don't know. I have to, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to think about like what could be really, really cool, like a really cool giveaway, um, for the, for the grand prize for, uh, for month of 500. But anyway, yeah, so I mean, it's Paris. <laughs> rare in Paris. Oh man, that would be cool. Yes. Although so the only problem with that is that, um, uh, to, I, I thought about like, you know, rare in Melbourne or, or rare in Paris or something like that. But then, then that would exclude everybody who doesn't have a passport or who, who, or who couldn't, you know, couldn't make that trip. It would be That's like, true. logistically, that would be really tough. Well, because the, a lot of book events are just long weekends, but when you're traveling that far, you can't really go for just a weekend. Yeah. You got to plan for like, you know, seven a, to 14 days. Yeah. That's a big, and that would probably be rough on you too, scheduling wise. Yeah, it would, be, it would be difficult to like, to make that happen. It just seems like there's a, like a lot of, you know, I can, I could see myself getting arrested and <laughs> uh, like being in a, a European uh, prison and like, yeah, that's, it's just something I, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, so, so there's yeah, like, Polycon, yeah. there's Indies Invade Philly, there's Book Bonanza. That's a huge one. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's there, are some, the, there are some really big ones. There's one in Orlando. It, last year it happened the weekend after Vegas. I can't remember what it's, I can never remember what it's called. But there's a book event, a big book event that happens there. You know Readers what, Take another, Denver. There's a, yeah, Readers Take Denver is a, is a, that's a that's a great I really loved Readers Take Denver. That was like the that was the most fun. And I really I felt like they like they were really Lisa Renee Jones is the is uh she organized it and she just 
I just really felt like she cared and she really took care of everybody. You could tell that there was like a lot of thought that went into, you know, went into that convention. I really, I really liked the way that she did that. So. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was the first year they had done it. And for a first year, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't even there for the whole thing, but I felt like they did a great job with communication. Yeah. You, know, yeah, you could were... kind of find where everything was. Things were spread out. You know, Angie, like doing doing one in, in St. Louis would be really cool, but like all of the gunfire and stuff would be, oh, no. you know, we'd have to, yeah, we'd have to avoid that. But so, yeah, so it's really good. And you know, another another one that I've heard a lot of good We're things about just take Denver. is, um, uh, what is the uh, uh, Authors in the Bluegrass? I heard is really good. Yes, I will definitely go to that one next year because it's driving distance, but it's it's a little smaller, but heard nothing but amazing things. Just the way they organized it. Jessica was there. Um, the authors and the narrators who were there said it was just amazing. Yeah. And that wouldn't be too far for you. You could drive there. Yeah, totally. Totally. And yeah, it's, it's beautiful out there. Too. That's October. That's going to be October of next year. They don't know the actual date yet because it's dependent on UK's football schedule. Oh, that makes sense. Because they have it at the stadium. And that was one of the things they really liked because there were television screens everywhere and everybody got wristbands. So you knew exactly when it was your turn to go and see whichever of the top five authors or narrators you wow, wanted to see cool. yeah so you weren't just waiting in line forever and everything was spread out and yeah. how do we find out about these events um lots of google searching mm -hmm. honestly like a lot of google searching and then tons of authors and narrators have fan pages on facebook that's a great place to find information about events like that well yeah, so I I just got uh, I'm I'm definitely going to Readers Take Denver next year, and uh, they just sent out an email uh, with uh, with like graphics for everybody. So you're gonna see you're gonna see a whole bunch of uh, authors and narrators posting on their socials about oh, Readers. And I want to go back. I would love to go back next year. I was gonna be at the at a at a bigger hotel next time next year as well. You yeah know. so that's yeah that's it's going to be that's going to be a a great a great convention so it'll be fun tiffany i'm gonna okay, have to you go. Should go i know you were going to go like 20 minutes ago <laughs> tell she i said i'm sorry <laughs> i will i will do it i'll tell her i'm sorry too but that was worth it that was so much fun what a that great surprise nice. bringing bringing jt in that was that was awesome that was awesome i loved it thank you all right guys well, I'm going to take off and I will, uh, I, I guess, uh, yeah, the next time, next time I see you, I'll see you. All right. I'll All talk right. to you later. Oh, yeah. Thank I'll see you in two weeks. Yes, that's right. In Chicago, drinking. Yes. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Fleur, how are you? You already got your readers to take Denver ticket?